gig as Aflac the Duck. Yeah, we haven't talked to him. He should rub tweets on himself. Yeah, he's also, uh, he wrote a book which... Uh, really? It's just insane. What is this book? Yeah, there seems to be some biograph- autobiographical parts to it, and he does mention me in the most unflattering way. Really? Yeah, I think I've had it with him. What happened there? I'll, I'll, well, he'll be here at 8 o'clock, and wow. I'll tell you. I mean, really. And he writes How about... That I don't know. He, he, I got a lot of questions about his book and about the Affleck duck. Dummy. You had a fucking... You had a, you had a, he had to go and tweet some bad stupid jokes. jokes. Yeah, they weren't even good. No. I'm going to yell at him. I'm going to yell at him like I'm yelling at you. <laughs> Gilbert. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Hi, morning. It's nice to see you again, sir. Oh, yes. yes. Rubber balls and liquor, I've heard. Rubber balls and liquor. It's an interesting I, title. Gee, it's, the press is crazy. Oh, the They're paparazzo. all over the place here. They're everywhere. Yes. So, Gilbert, you've got the uh, the new book. Oh, yes. Jeff, you're on the air. And uh, what else is new? I mean, a lot, uh, lot's changed since uh, last Oh, week. yes, yes. It's just, uh, I, I'm the new Pillsbury Doughboy. I, uh, I just thought I'd announce that. Wow, you are ever yes, evolving. Yeah. Yes, it's just uh, insane. <laughs> either way, you can look either way. Oh, okay. yes. I appreciate you dividing the time. Right? Yes. <laughs> All right. This way, if you put them together and put in your glasses, it's 3D. <laughs> 3D on the cheap. Yes. Okay, sir. I'll let, I'll let you go talk to Howard. Okay. Thank you. I do. Gilbert Gottfried wrote a book. It's even, it's weird because he, he was bragging to Will in the pre-interview. We actually pre-interviewed him about his book. Yeah. We've never had a book before. We have a book and it's, it's a weird book. Gilbert claims he wrote it himself, and then he told Gary in the green room he had a ghostwriter. So we don't know what he had. No one knows Make what he did. Make up your mind. Yeah. Which was it? Well, I, I would write, and then I'd send it in, and then it was a they'd... combined effort. They, yeah, right, yeah. Right. They'd start looking at it and going, uh... We have to put this in some kind of shape. Yes, yeah. Because you, gradu- you didn't even graduate high school, That's so you're, right. not a, you're probably yeah. not a great writer. Yeah. Right. Did you type it, or did you write it longhand? Oh, I was writing it longhand, and then I they'd have to decipher it. <laughs> and then say, uh, okay, this has gone on too long. This isn't too long enough. It's a strange. It's a strange book. I have a lot of notes about the book because yeah? we've known Gilbert for a long time. And of what course, is this book? What is the name of this book? The first book of is all? Co- it's uh, rubber balls and liquor. Okay. Rubber balls and in other words, a play on words where you yes. rub her balls. Rub her balls, which girls but don't, they have, don't balls. have balls. Right, rub yeah. her balls and <laughs> liquor. <laughs> How do you explain the title? Even rubber balls and liquor. Uh, yeah, it was. That's from a kid's joke, like the like f- a Jackie Martling joke. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, <laughs> yes. A few people said, "Where'd you get the title, Jackie Martling?" Right, and and they said. Um, well, it's the, how the old kids joke goes is you ask someone to say rubber balls and liquor to right. everything you say. And you go, so I had breakfast today. Rubber balls and liquor. I had lunch. Rubber balls and liquor. What are you going to do with your girlfriend tonight? Rubber balls and liquor. Yeah. And that's the joke? Uh, and that's the that, <laughs> and that's, that inspired yeah, you. Yeah, for a kid. <laughs> Did you like that joke when you were young? Is that the joke is that you your loved? First joke? Well, back then you thought, oh, this is really risque stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you know. Listen, I defended you. You know, yes. you know. First of all, I'll tell you. Did you really? I am mentioned in this book. There's one short story about me. I mean, if anyone's been better to this guy than me, I don't know who it is. I even defended him during that dopey Affleck duck thing. Well, that's true. You did say they shouldn't have hired him in the first place. Well, I yeah, said exactly. that. I said, who would be yeah, nuts exactly. to hire this guy? He, he's, he makes the, the N-word, everything. He's offensive all the time. Nobody is is more offensive than Gilbert. And then they're shocked when he makes a couple of Japanese jokes during a tsunami. I mean, it's it's insane, isn't it? Yeah, although I can't really, I still can't really talk about the... Uh, oh, because you got to pay out. Uh, yes, yeah. So I still have to... I see. So you can't disparage the Affleck yeah. company. So so basically, I'm like the head of General Motors coming on a show going, let's not talk about cars. You know? yeah. it's, like, so it's, it's incredible. I know that you must be broken up inside because I'm, I know it was several hundred thousand dollars a year for just one day's work. Where you, I mean, it was one, to record the Affleck commercials and say Affleck. 
it was a day's work, right? Oh, yeah. Not even. I mean, yeah. when I say work, you got in front of a microphone and you went, ah, fine. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then the, the, the creative director would say to you, Gilbert, can you give me a little more uh, passion when you say <laughs> yes. Affleck? And then you go, Act Affleck. like you're scared. Yeah, act, yeah. act like you're the duck and you're scared. <laughs> I mean, it, it was probably the easiest money you ever made in your life, right? Oh, sure. And I know you love money. Yeah. Uh, me? Yeah. Where I did mean, you get this from? I mean, you. Uh, it must be driving you crazy that your kids are getting older and you've got to pay you for lost school. And yeah, you, and just, you, just that I have kids. Right. It's driving me crazy. I know. And then you have. Gary's in the green room with Gilbert. He yeah. says, how, how old are the kids now? Gilbert goes, um. <laughs> Yes, I always I, have a problem with this. I, I had to think about it. And then he goes, the 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 one, the girl is for... <laughs> he doesn't even know her name. Yeah. Her I don't name. even say daughter or son. No. I still say the girl, the, one, the, the girl, boy. And the boy is... Uh, are you not proud of being a father? Or? I, I guess. I'm still like waking up in a twilight zone. It's hard for you because oh, yes. you, you do have a difficult time connecting with people. I know this about you in real life. Oh, yes. So it must be weird. Like your wife's so normal and everything, and then like you are so disconnected. Does she have to yell at you all day and say, Gilbert, no, you have to go and take care of the kids now? Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you would ignore them. Yeah, well, yeah, I they, still wonder if Gilbert can be left alone with the children. Yeah. Yeah, they, they'd be like, uh, they'd find them like starved to death. Right. Somewhere, and they go. And do you forget? And them? you're going. Oh, I didn't know they had to be fed. Do your kids drive you crazy? I mean, do you, like, is it so hard for you to stay connected and like go? Oh, I want to do something for them, or I want to help them, or. I I still think I don't know guy, these guys who say they you know oh it's such a great I think it's a great better experience for women like guys. <laughs> You know, you can enjoy it up to a point, and then you right. want to watch TV. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and but do you have, give them affection? Do you hold them? Uh, yeah. Hug them? Up to a point. Will then... you kiss them? Uh, okay, sometimes. Yeah. Will, yeah. You kiss this, will you kiss your son? Like, oh, you're so cute? Or will you just think that's gay? Uh, well, it, he's still not even two yet, so right. it's not gay yet. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, have you decided whether you'd kiss your son like when he's 18? Would you kiss him on the cheek and kiss each other? Or do you think that that's something that yeah, should not that, be done? Yeah, I think they, they eventually decide. Right. They figure you're gross and they're not going to kiss you. Yeah, like, oh, God, uh, an old man is kissing me in the mouth. The first thing I'm struck by... I, at first, I thought rubber balls and liquor was about, like, jokes or something. Mm -hmm. But this is the story of your life, and yet you leave out huge hunks of things. Like, you don't mention your wife except oh, yes. at the end. Yes. You don't even mention how you met her. You don't mention anything about her. You don't mention anything about your children except you dedicate the book to your children. Yeah. You do. Yeah, well, yes. that he did. Something. Yes, yeah. I'm like Danny Thomas. <laughs> did you find yourself <laughs> dedicating the book to your children because it's the right thing to do, not because you really wanted to? Yeah, I yeah. didn't know who else to dedicate it <laughs> you to. Had so. right. Else. Uh, <laughs> right. So you you uh, getting back to Affleck for a second. I know yeah. you can't yeah. uh, you can't disparage yeah. your company, and you got to be careful because you get a payout of some kind. Uh, but this has got to be killing you because it was hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Oh, sure. Did it cross your mind at any time that, that to, rather than waste your time on Twitter? I mean, if you could take it all back, would you? Because it's on dopey Twitter. I don't know. You how many never. You yeah. certainly yeah. didn't dream that this was going to happen. Uh, no, Egypt. you know. You know what it, it was like to me. The whole thing, and even with the the way the media went, I, I was a bigger story than the tsunami. Right. You <laughs> were. You yeah. caused the tsunami. Yes. <laughs> it really. Do was. you think it was worth it in a way? Because didn't this put you back in the public eye? And it's kind well, of you're a weird, bad boy. It's my, your bit weird promotion. My my Twitter account. Uh, like is like a hundred times as much <laughs> as it was before. And now whenever somebody dies, they, I get a thousand Twitters going, hey, what do you got on this guy? Well, are you afraid now to tweet? Because I've noticed your tweets have calmed down yeah. in a sense. You have kind of reined it in, right? Well, I this is the way I kind of feel like people say, do you feel bad about it? And it's like, to me, it's both things. It's like, I feel like, if I get up in the morning one day and I had cornflakes, and after that I lose my job and I'm on the news 24 hours a day condemning me. and right. the, So the first thing you'd go is like, 
oh god why did i eat cornflakes that's and then you go wait a minute i ate cornflakes every day for years right well you make a good point yeah um none of this us like cornflakes you've been making a living <laughs> yeah. yeah you have every day of your life gotten up and made offensive jokes oh yeah so how yeah. can you rethink this now that they've discovered that you make offensive yeah jokes? it's like i i started yeah. the aristocrats i did the september but 11 joke in a and, way gilbert you now are in a weird position you are not tweeting Offensive jokes, and you were for the first time that I know of in your career, you were forced to apologize. That oh, yes. was what yeah. I want to know. How did you write this apology? It, well, was the apology part of your settlement? In other words, you had to. Uh, make I don't amends? know where that was. That happened on that like first day and a half where <laughs> there was just. Who advised you to make this apology? I don't know. It was going back and forth, like with the agents and everything. <laughs> oh, so. so this was like a, mm -hmm. a major high-level <clears throat> meeting kind oh, of situation. Oh, yeah. Situation. First time you're in yes. touch with your agent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was first, this an attempt? First time my agent called. <clears throat> was the apology an attempt to hold on to the Affleck account for you? I don't think so. I don't know what it was. I, I It's like that. Those first two days, mm -hmm. I, I was a daze. That was like, you in a daze. Yeah. Right. I was going, you didn't know what had happened. Like, like, what the hell after everything I've ever said in my career? Yeah. I mean, you've used the N-word on our like, show. You do, uh, you know, things about Jews, uh, yeah, about the Hispanics, Holocaust, the Holocaust. He does it so all. I, right. I was thinking, watching it on the news every day and all over the place, I was thinking, okay. Okay, so they never saw the aristocrats. They never watched the roast. You started and, defending yourself in yes, your mind. And they never once uh, heard of your show. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> well, now you were involved with a corporation. Yeah. See, it, it never would have been anything except the fact that Affleck is. Seven, who, did you know that 75% no, of their business is no. in Japan? You knew nothing about the company. No, no. Some celebrities actually look into the company they're endorsing. You oh, don't even please. care. I mean, yeah. who knows what. You think what he's investigating oh, Shudini? Yes. Did you investigate? <laughs> To get Shudini? Do you, know where, do you now look into where most of the Shudinis are sold? Although this is something even before all this happened to me that I that I uh, kind of was uh, understood about Kathy Lee Gifford, right. who got in trouble with the sweatshop. Yes. Right. And I was thinking everyone was condemning her, and I thought, well. I don't know. Does every celebrity who does a commercial, no. what, does he hire the CIA to check into <laughs> no, it? It's no, like, you, Of course not. So you didn't know uh, this. Does, do, do, does the Affleck company call you? Who, how do they fire you? Like, how does that all occur? Oh, see, now it's getting into more and more. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, do they call you directly or an agent? Uh, yeah, I found out uh, for sure through the agent. Through the yeah, agent, yes, okay. Yes. And so the apology, your agent says, Gilbert, we got to do damage control. Uh, yeah, I think this was a whole yeah. across the board. St and the funny part about it is you realize then that, you know, the media needs something to talk about, so right. they make it into so much... This is what I loved about when they reported it. They, they said it was comments and remarks Man. that Gilbert Gottfried made. Because if they said jokes he made, people would go like, what? So he's a comic making jokes. Were you afraid for your life at this point? Because it got so heated that oh, people were hating you so much. Did you get the, nervous? The first uh, two days on the Twitter account were like psycho emails. <laughs> I think these are these people who live there and are waiting. Right. And those were psycho. We're going to kill you and your family. You should die. You were cyberbullied. Yeah. Right. And then after that, it was just this overflowing of fans going, you know, hey, you're making this a is, joke. Yeah, you're making right. a joke. This is what you do. And but the apology itself was so not like you. Did you actually write it yourself, or did someone yeah, compose it? Yeah, we said it, it wasn't I, your okay. words. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. <laughs> that you. was like, out, out of the machine, you know, <laughs> apology uh, 176. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah, I sincerely yeah. apologize to yes. anyone who was offended by my attempt at humor regarding the tragedy in Japan. Yes. it was. I meant no disrespect, and my thoughts are with the victims and their families. Were your thoughts really with the victims <laughs> and their families? Is there anything about <laughs> This, that is true. All right. Don't people know your <laughs> thoughts are only on you and, and how oh, to save yeah. money? Well, it's kind of like when Mike Tyson uh, has an apology or something released to the press. Right. And it's so eloquent. <laughs> Have you made yeah. a tsunami joke since? Now that, I mean, you are fired from Affleck, you might as well. Yeah, I made a couple. You did. You're yeah, still doing it. a couple it. of other. Right.
So your thoughts are no longer with the family? I, I, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, I sent out. Uh, oh, I sent out a Twitter on Hitler's birthday. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so this is a tremendous um, cut in your income because yes. I don't know what percentage of the Affleck commercial played into your income, but I would imagine it was pretty, big pretty, hit. Intense, yeah. pretty, big hit. pretty big hit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're upset about that. I have to. Think. Oh, of course. Right. Cause that was good. Do yes. you think you're able to get any more commercial work after an incident like this? Or are you now blacklisted? Are you persona non grata? It's a funny thing. Cause I mean, the more, see, this is what I realized too about, not that I just realized it about the media is for a while, like, the tsunami was on every minute of the news. Right. And then one day I wake up, and most of the news was taken up one morning by Sorry. Uh, Chris Brown threw a chair backstage at right. Good Morning America. Right. Did that take the heat off you? Uh, a little bit. And then you see that the... Uh, the newscasters are using the same emotion and same <laughs> urgency right. talking about Chris Brown. Right. What was your best tsunami joke out of all of this? When you were in the midst of this, what did you feel? Were there any that you felt right. were of great quality? Right. That were worth <laughs> most. Mo See, that's the funny thing. They picked out two mm -hmm. that came across as the most mean, and most of them were really dumb. Right. When you really I thought, that's what I said. He said, those aren't even the least bit offensive compared to what else he does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. I, I did one, and I mean, I wish they would have <laughs> had this one yeah. and, and introduce it with that same thing of like, I'm, we're warning you ahead of time. Right. <laughs> one of the jokes I made was, what do Japanese Jews like to eat? What? Hebrew National Tsunami. <laughs> you know, what? Which is as dumb a joke. Yeah, what is that mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's supposed to be salami like yeah, tsunami. Yeah, yes, Wow, yes. That's, a, that's, that's not that's even... That's going far. It's, it's, yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. It, it's like if people could take offense to that, it's, it's how, how stupid... <laughs> you are. And, and basically unfunny. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's the top pop singer in Japan, Gwen Tsunami. You know, it was like, I was doing jokes like that. Ah. <laughs> so, why waste your good material on Twitter? Yeah, why use right. my A stuff? The other impression I get is that <laughs> while you're on Twitter, like someone said to me, do you know Gilbert follows all the people from our show, even the interns and all that? And I go, don't you realize Gilbert doesn't work the Twitter? He has some no. guy who you call him up and go, here's a joke, put this up. And and 99, mm. I, I have about like uh, 50 Howard Stearns right. and uh, 60 <laughs> Robbins. Following you. Yeah, so I, you know, it's... It's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, so, but so the Twitter is good for you for business, and yet yes. the Twitter is the thing that really got you it's, in trouble. Oh, it's it's a scary time period. Do you but think you this do, is the first time? Yes. Do you think this is the first time someone actually got fired for tweeting? No, no, a few. I I've been watching this now. Like um, one guy, he was in Detroit, <laughs> and he was stuck in traffic right. or something, and he was doing stuff on his Twitter, right. and he said. This is the Motor City, and yet nobody here knows how to drive, <laughs> which is a pretty funny joke. Right. Uh -huh. Certainly funnier than any of the ones I put up. <laughs> yes. But, uh, and uh, I think Chrysler got started suing his company, <laughs> and he immediately was fired. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. And then there was some teacher who was like, oh. she didn't even put her name down. She right. just was complaining about her job. Like, right. Uh, loud kids, and she got fired. They found out. <laughs> uh, that Twitter's dangerous. Oh, it yeah. is scary, isn't and, it? And one guy was at an airport, and uh, he started complaining about the airline because they, they had delays, and he was there for a few hours. They they He got fired. <laughs> it, wow. It's a weird time period. It but is. you yeah. know what, Howard? You had started to go down this road. You didn't lose other commercial no. Work that you had. No, it didn't I didn't. Not the spread. <laughs> you didn't didn't spread. Account. And you're still the parrot for Disney, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, they had yeah. no problem with so. your jokes. And, and the funny thing, too, is the people who really blew it up in mm -hmm. the beginning and were the most, they, most offended, most shocked, most outraged 
were first TMZ. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Perez Hilton. Yeah, he got oh, upset. Stop. Yeah, uh, yeah. He draws he, penises on, on little kids. Faces. Yeah, right. yeah. He, you know, at times I've had Perez on, and I and I said to him there was a point where he was relentlessly making fun of Bruce Willis and Demi Moore's kid. Oh yeah. Or so. Oh, no, it was it was Ben Stiller's kid or somebody. Somebody. Adam kid. Sandler's kid. Yeah. That's who it was. And, and I said to him, "Gee, what did the kid do? I mean, you know." And and, and he's since rethought all of that. And, right. and he has grown, I guess, as a yeah. person. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, so for him to be but outraged. for him, and TMZ, oh, yeah. the bastion yeah. and TMZ, of good I mean, taste. And he'll draw, like, you know, cum stains <laughs> on someone's mouth and say that this guy's gay. And it's like... Oh, uh-huh. you're you're the arbiter of good taste. Yeah, so, but you offended him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ultimately, though, if you could take it all back, yeah. would you? Because you'd want the money from the Affleck yeah. commercial, right? I mean, you would take it all back if you could. If you could go back in a time machine and say, you know, hey, but you make yeah. it. You know, the, the, you make a really good point. How could you ever go back in time and take? This is something how you make your living every day. You're offensive. Oh yeah, it's it's like I said. Mm. I I said that before about the cornflakes. Did it's you like, get so nervous? during this that you, like was there a certain point because when it's really bad be- now you can look back on oh, and go you yeah, know what yeah. I survived it yes but were you starting to get neurotically crazy like locking the doors like oh my god I'm never I'm giving well, up show business it, it was um, the worst I ever saw you was when you got ill oh yeah and you were going to give up show business and that was no <laughs> bullshit and and then uh, a then a day later I <laughs> you were back on stage yeah, yes and so so did you get to the point like that's it I've had it I mean the Who real deal I, I was definitely going around the days right. for about two days there when I got the because the first people to call you are the psycho <laughs> Twitterers <laughs> and But emails. not only the Twitterers but even the agents are so concerned yes, and the people yeah. and your wife was probably concerned and everyone's like oh my god oh my god. And I became one of those people where I'd look out my window and there were cars parked right with like reporters and stuff and I'd go. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. They would jump out of cars <laughs> with camera crews yeah. or they'd be hiding in like doorways and they'd run out. Wow. What was the kookiest thought you had during it? Like, I, I can imagine at some point you went, maybe I should go volunteer in Japan. Like, oh, actually yeah. fly over. You know, like, did you yeah, get... go over and pick up some uh, debris. People, people, did, you get, did you get to the point where you said, that's it, I'm leaving show business because I can't, I've got enough money, I'm t- I can't take well, it anymore. I, I didn't think I was going to leave show business at that point. I thought show business had already left. You thought your career was gone. Yeah. And also, I I remember the first time I stepped out of my house, I thought, it's going to be like a Frankenstein movie, you know, with pitchforks. And <laughs> <laughs> they're going to chase you out of town. Yeah. And then uh, you realize the average person has a life. Right, and, and they don't really care all that yeah, much. Yeah, they come up, they w- still want their picture taken with right. you, still want to... We should have said we couldn't have Gilbert on anymore. Yeah. Oh, that would have been. That would have been really we good. We should have banned him from the show. I was shocked to. Um, I was actually shocked to read in Rubber Balls and Liquor. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes you know, I, I'm shocked that. I mean, I was kind of anxious to hear about your parents. Because I still, when I saw you in the hospital with your mother, I knew something weird was up, and um, and you know your sister was there, and and I don't know much about your father. I mean, you do say in rubber balls and liquor that your father. I didn't know this was a hardware store guy. Yeah, and he could fix anything. And then when times were really bad, you weren't rich people. That your father would sell airplane glue to kids because he knew they liked to get high off. You're it. kidding! No, his he, <laughs> he had like one of these stores that nothing got sold in this. Right. I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere. I never there was no reason for a lock. On Where the was door. it? It was in Coney Island, okay. but in like a side area there. <laughs> not no near. foot traffic whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. not near the cyclone or anything. He was not a great businessman. No. And <laughs> and one day, uh, you know, people started sniffing glue around that time, so they passed a law that was a really dumb law right. that uh, you could only sell glue to kids if they bought an, uh, a model kit. Right. I remember this. Yes, yeah. because that was somehow saying that, well, they're gluing a model with it. <laughs> right. And he had, like... Uh, one airplane model that was there collecting dust for all those years, right. and they would buy that. <laughs> Drug addicts are coming in and buy model yes, planes. Yes, they yeah. would buy a model plane, yeah. and then he would like 
count to five and walk around the corner, walk around the side of the store where there was a garbage can, right. reach in, and there would be the unopened uh, kit, <laughs> and he'd bring it back in the store, dust it off, and sell it. Oh, my goodness. I, I think he sold it, like, about uh, for a couple of years there, the same kit. Do you think that's why you're so afraid of uh, losing money and oh, spending yeah. money? Because you saw your father actually grabbing the modeling yes. kits? Yes. Yeah, he made yeah. quite a profit. But there was nothing really revealing though we don't learn about your relationship with your mother and all of that do we but you're never no. gonna you're never gonna open up so, about that somebody said to me who read the book who knows me they said there were parts in the book where it looked like it was getting touching and right. starting to reveal something and a little warm and then it would quickly turn to like childish and immature and obscene yeah, it's so it's so frustrating with yeah. you i want the real gilbert i want to know everybody well, there you are some get inside and, and the but there said, are revealing moments in yeah, the book the guy said it's like talking to you in person right well you know what i thought gilbert would at least get emotional about me somewhere in the book so i've only <laughs> mentioned in one paragraph yeah and it's interesting because it's Gilbert's take on what happened at the hospital, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Let me hear this. I mean, first of all, I will tell you, when I went to see Gilbert in the hospital, it was out of true compassion. Absolutely. I said, no one's visiting. Right. No one cares about him. No one's visiting him. I mean, he had nothing. You actually nothing. recruited others to visit him. Oh, yes. And I said, I said, this guy is at least going to be emotional in the book about that. He goes, I couldn't get the orderlies in. Howard Stern, the king of all media, came to visit. He didn't want to be noticed coming in and out of the hospital, so he put on sunglasses and a baseball cap, which even in the middle of my pain and suffering struck me as the <laughs> stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> After all, he is a ridiculously tall person with a ridiculously wild head of hair. So it's not like a pair of sunglasses and a baseball cap are much of a disguise. At eight feet tall with that great big nose, it looked like the number seven was visiting me. But I recognized Howard right away. It helped. I guess that I knew he'd be coming because Robin Quivers had visited a day or two before and they needed something new to talk about on the air. This way, at least, they could compare notes and fill a couple of segments. I mean, it was pathetic. Oh, Gilbert yeah. was worried about the papers finding out that he was in the hospital so yeah, long. Oh, no Not one, one paper shit. even wrote a fucking thing. Hey, remember, the first call we got was don't say anything. And then the second call we got was a couple of months later. said, can someone please mention that I'm in the hospital? <laughs> and, and I mean, come I, on. I remember I was so proud. It was such a victory. Years later, like the Post wrote the curse of Saturday Night Live, one of those real dopey yeah. articles. Yeah. And one was... Gilbert Gottfried hovered near death. And <laughs> yeah. So I thought, see, I made it. <laughs> I don't think Howard particularly wanted to be at the hospital. He didn't say much and he didn't stay long. He took, I stayed forever. It felt and like Gilbert years. didn't speak. No. He's Gilbert the one who didn't talk. There. Yes. And moaned, I'm out of show business. I wanted, what what's it all mean? What are we doing with our lives? It's like I, Robin on our trip. I, <laughs> he took one look at my open stomach and turned red. Right before he left, yeah, Gilbert's showing me his wound. Oh. Right before he left, how, Gilbert, all they did was an appendectomy, and they couldn't close the wound. He's so yes. unhealthy. Oh, God. And I have to see that. <laughs> right before he left, Howard asked if there was anything he could bring me. My eyes filled up with tears the way they do whenever I think about receiving some free shit. <laughs> I ran through a long list of things I could use, and I kept updating that list from week to week until finally Howard just sent me a $2 pair of slippers and called it quits. He never, never again made the mistake of asking me if I needed anything. And that is my mention in the book. Absolutely true. Uh, that's Absolutely it. Absolutely true, though. But uh, you do mention a couple of things that I'm interested in, i got to ask you about, because yes. I didn't know this about you. First of all, you described that you one night did actually pick up a stripper at a strip club and bring her home to your apartment. Uh, yes, yes. And, that was amazing. And that you fucked her. And you came so fast. <laughs> and you're so odd that the, the next night when you called her to come back, she wouldn't even pick up the phone. Yes. <laughs> it was, I somehow miraculously mm -hmm. got a stripper up to my apartment. <laughs> How this murder. happened, it was like, that's one of those things like, in, if you are writing a series, they have certain rules with characters that you can't break. Right. You know, like if, if Fonzie did a ballet, you couldn't <laughs> use it. He would right. never do it. And that would, this is something that would never work. And so I went up, and this was a stripper I'd seen naked before. Right. So right. and Were you at the club when you picked her up? Uh, well, we were at the club, and then 
Uh, it was at some event <laughs> I got hired for. Was she impressed that you were the comic at the event, so therefore you were able to show her you were famous? I was guess so, yeah. yeah. Because was, that doesn't I, work for you normally, yeah, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I was hosting this thing. Like, you're so gross, fame doesn't even yeah, help you yes. get laid. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> you're that, so that's... disgusting. I mean, because any I, famous guy can get laid. I could be at the Academy Awards. Right, and winning. <laughs> Not, yeah. yeah. So you, somehow this and, stripper went for you. Yeah, somehow we met for like lunch or something and then got her up to my apartment <laughs> and I'm on the couch with her and we start making out, which oh, I'm going you, out of my mind. Are you, do you, are you the guy who slams his tongue down a girl's throat right away? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like you don't even have any, yes. any cooth. No build up. Yeah, yeah right. not, not that light kissing stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're not really good yeah, at it. Yeah, it's like the rotor rooter man. Right. Like, so you don't have any compunction to sort of, uh, I'll, I'll win her over with my great yeah, kissing, no, soft no. light kisses, <laughs> nothing. I've got her here, I've got to do this now. Right, Where I okay. put on romantic music right. and the bar turns around. Do, do, did the stripper say to you, like, oh, can you just not put your tongue? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I was on the couch with her, we're making out, and I'm thinking all the time, you know, going, Oh my God! I can't believe I'm making out with this girl, this stripper. Was she really good looking? Na- yeah, she was yeah. really hot looking. Yeah. And and then the clothes start coming off, and she's wearing this like Victoria's Secret type underwear. Wow! You know, so she was prepared. Oh yeah, yeah, it was like. And then I was c- totally and. Are you like? I'll get as much as I can before she comes to her senses. Right. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> moment. Let me get as much as I can. So you were probably hard as a rock. I mean, she looked good. And, yes. Yeah. And Do you get naked as well? Uh, yes. Yeah. Like you don't leave a shirt on? Are you trying to hide your scar from your operation? I, I think say, this was before. Okay. Pre or post. Yes. Right. <laughs> so you, you... I heard, if I could do one side track, I heard a story that Marilyn Monroe every now and then would pick up like just guys off the street, like elevator operators and cab drivers and stuff. <laughs> and they would start making out with her. And when it was time to actually fuck her, they would get a look on their face like, oh, my God, I'm about to fuck Marilyn Monroe. And they'd lose their heart on because <laughs> they were under <laughs> so, uh, so it, But in my case, it was the opposite. Right. I, was, I, I get into bed with her, and she's totally naked, and right. she's got one of these stripper asses that is, like, rock Perfect. hard. Yeah, uh, That's like, it looks like a, you a, know, like... A bubble. It, yeah, yeah, it looks like a cartoon in play. Or, like, half a soccer ball. It's, like, uh, yes, perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, perfect ass. <laughs> yeah. And so I remember I was... Getting ready to do her doggy style. Fascinating and, book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For you what intellectuals out there. Yeah. I can't believe you, you needed a writer yeah. to help you with this. <laughs> so you're getting ready to fuck her. And, and, and there's her ass up in the air. That's just like perfection. Right. As, as is the rest of her. Mm-hmm. And and if if I say you know I, I I get my dick in right and if I say I lasted like a full two and a half seconds do you I even use a rub <laughs> it was like boom yeah yeah do you yeah. ever use a rubber or no you know rubber yeah I no I put on a rubber okay yeah but I I I put my dick in and like. <laughs> I don't know if I even moved it once. You know, I was... <laughs> I know the feeling. I, I moved it in and then just, like, exploded. With other women, yeah. like, with your wife, are you able to hold out yeah, a little bit? Yeah, yeah, like with other... Uh, I'd pay this, anything to see you fuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I should... that See, that would be, a, be a sex b- tape that would sell. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> and, yeah, I put my dick in. I think my dick was there half a second inside her, and boom. I've had the same thing happen many a million times. Oh, yeah. And yeah. she... She's a doggy style, and she... Then looks over her shoulder. <laughs> like, like looking at like, you like a gnat. Like shocked and horrified. Right. <laughs> That's it? She's like, hey, maybe this guy doesn't look up, but maybe he can fuck. And like, yeah. oh, oh, it's over. <laughs> That's and right. and she, she's like, just this horrified look. Like Did you she apologize? She saw the Loch Ness Monster or something. And she goes, did, did you... <laughs> and and I and I'm there like in total ecstasy. Right. <laughs> I'm there good. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Nothing for you. Yeah, yeah. She could. I like. Did she get out of the apartment, or did yeah. she let you do it? Why didn't she just do it again? Like, why couldn't she say, "Hey, yeah, listen, yeah. Now, you're so I, hot, I, I came." I, I think I was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you were drained.
I think she was could not believe how oh. quick. So did she get dressed and leave? Like, oh, yeah. You talk yeah. about a walk of shame. That's the walk of shame. Coming out of Gilbert Coffrey's apartment after he blew his load. And so you and, and so you describe in the book that you called her the next day. Yeah. I uh, I say that like she when she was leaving the place, I talked about seeing her again and she gave me a look that says <laughs> that that like without saying anything says I'm hot looking now, but in a year from now, I'll be old and washed up and, <laughs> and I'll be uh, found dead in a trunk or in the Hudson yeah. River, uh, either by having my throat cut by my motorcycle boyfriend <laughs> or I'll be dead of AIDS. So I'll kill you in a second yeah, without right. thinking about it. But you did call her again. Yes. Yes, and I she, did. And she what? Hung up? Yeah. Well, there, hung up. there was like this silence on the phone. What do you say? Hi, this is Gilbert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was it. And and I said I I thought it from the silence I said she was giving me that look over the phone. The other thing I felt I felt was amazing in the book. You talk about when you were on Saturday Night Live. Now I didn't know this. You, oh yes. You auditioned for Saturday Night Live. I guess in front of Lorne Michaels. Oh, no, no, it wasn't no, Lorne no. Michaels. This was uh, uh, Gene Demanian. Gene yes. Demanian. And and she sits there in an auditorium, but she was with Woody Allen. She was good friends with Woody oh, Allen. Oh, yeah. This, and he watched your audition. Yeah, well, he watched, like, the tapes of all the auditions. They were like, it was like a full day thing. Someone was there who I knew and saw this. And uh, he's sitting there the whole time, thousands of comics going by, and he's staring stone face. Right. Not, not even, like, changing an expression or anything. <laughs> And then finally mine comes on and then he like sits up and it looks like, oh, he's going to start like uh, bursting out laughing. He or discovered us. a new yeah. talent. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks up and he like points his finger and he goes, is he a Navajo Indian? <laughs> <laughs> And that was it? Yeah, 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 that was it. And then he <laughs> sat back down. Navajo <laughs> Indian. <laughs> so yeah, Navajo Indian. Yes. <laughs> what did you do in that audition for Saturday Night Live? Did you Were do you your groucho? Yes. I'll never yeah. understand what did you. you do? Did you do your groucho at all? Did you? Do? He would have loved that. I know I should have because he was friends with groucho. The thing I'll never understand about you yes. and Saturday Night Live is you do so many great characters. This used to drive me nuts. You yes. do, you know, if you just for the rest of your life did groucho and, uh, and, and uh, Dracula, you know, Dracula, Dracula Gottfried, Godfrey? and did your dice clay. Just those three impressions, right there. Or your Jew he, that sings. Oh yes. If you had done that, they would have. They, 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 why didn't you do characters I on Saturday Night Live? Well, no one would ever describe me as self-destructive, certainly. <laughs> but you didn't want to distinguish yourself in any way. You're like I, the least competitive person, yes. and yet, and yet you're in a competitive business. Yes. I don't get it. I. It makes no sense. And the funny thing is, with with my Groucho imitation, like. I remember first time I did it for Dick Cavett, his mouth hung open. It's the most fantastic yeah. thing ever. And J Jim Brewer, you know, describes the same thing. When he was on Saturday Night Live, he went up to one of the interns and just kind of kidding around, started doing his Joe Pesci. He said he wouldn't do his impressions. And he goes, I'm not an impressionist. And I wouldn't do my, I'm a stand-up. I wouldn't yeah. do my impression. But I was kidding around with this kid. And then when he did Joe Pesci, they built the whole fucking oh, Saturday yes, Night Live around yes. That was you, what he was known and, for. And you have even I said. I should have. But of course. Yes. And you even say. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that for Saturday Night yeah. Live. I like to save it for my stand-up. <laughs> I mean, you're on TV. Here's yes. your moment. You know, what did you want to do for Saturday I Night Live? Don't what was know. your imagining? That I, you were I, gonna... I even say in the book, like, and it's true, I hated the writers. The writers hated me. And to <laughs> show it, Why? there was one sketch they wrote that takes place at a funeral, and I was the body in the coffin. <laughs> why? But why didn't you, like, why did you even bother auditioning for Saturday Night Live? Uh, God knows. And then it was it was weird, because I, I read other people's interviews about uh -huh. auditioning for that, yeah. where they said they were terrified, and they hated everyone else in the room, uh -huh. and it was just driving them nuts. And I remember when I auditioned, I was like, I didn't even think about it. I right. was there. I wasn't even... <laughs> you didn't care. Yeah, yeah. It didn't strike me as anything. I auditioned. They brought me back, and I auditioned again. 
And then when they announced to me, oh, you got the part. It yeah. Also, it wasn't like... You, you weren't moved by yeah, it. Yeah. You I didn't recognize excited. the enormity of it, that this was where Belushi's career I, I was launched, where it was uh, uh, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Ackroyd, uh, Eddie Murphy. You know, what, what, well, oh, yeah. It wasn't Eddie Murphy at that yeah. point. Yeah. But I'm saying, all of these great people had these unbelievable careers, and this is your moment. It just doesn't yeah. occur to you. Although, with that season, I think it was... I remember that season, no one can believe, like, Saturday Night Live would continue without the original cast. Right. And that was, like, the big media thing. But if you yeah. did a sketch on there, I where know. you were old yes. Groucho, and one of the other people on there played uh, Dick Cavett, it would have been the biggest thing ever. You would have been as big as a, a Billy Crystal yeah, went on to do the, movies. Like, it is, like, the two biggest compliments as far as... Uh, my impressions go is when Dick Cavett was amazed at my Grouch Show imitation because he was it's friends brilliant. with him. What, when you saw Dick Cavett, you did it for him? Uh, yeah. What did you do? What yeah, did you say? I was on his show and I was going, you know, and there was, there's been many songs <laughs> about mothers and, and, and there's never been that many songs about fathers. <laughs> And except for Harry Ruby, he was a songwriter at the time. Dick, why did you never interrupt Groucho? Yes. <laughs> why is that? <laughs> and then the other uh, greatest compliment I got was on uh, Thick of the Night. Alan I, Thick. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I You're remember. You're going to really bring up Thick yeah. of the Night? Yes. Yeah, well, he, was, he was a regular on Thick of the Night, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. He zipped there in the kit book. <laughs> <laughs> Never know when he's going to come down. <laughs> you know, he lives up there, strange man. Now, when Alan Thick was the best show. He, he, he nev his big thing was you never knew who was going to come out of the catwalk. Oh, yes. <laughs> All the characters were going to come out. And it, it, the show is a horror scene. Yeah. And But one time I was on, I was doing a bit, and I started improvising, and I did a Peter Laurie imitation. Right. And when I got off, um, uh, Vincent Price was one of the guests on the show, and he tap he leans over and taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, I loved your Peter Laurie imitation. <laughs> <laughs> what was your Peter Laurie? What did you do on there? Oh, God. Uh, 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 let, yes, wait, wait, wait. there's been a million different types. Peter but, Laurie seems like. <laughs> but look at the impressions yes. you do. If you had just walked into the writers' meeting and said, "Hey, by the way, I do uh, old Groucho. I do yes. uh, Dracula," you, know, you walk in and you're, yes. Uh, uh, you yes. know, yeah. they would have built entire <laughs> bits around you. I, it's just it, it, it actually drives me nuts that you don't understand this. I know. Years years <laughs> later, though, I did do Dracula for Son of the Beach. Yes, yes. thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I I knew a good thing when I saw it. And a rabbi. Yes, but uh, yeah, you were a rabbi who gets bitten by Dracula, <laughs> and you Dracula. turn into Dracula, the Jewish Dracula. <laughs> that was a great show. I don't know why it didn't take off. <laughs> Did you, uh, you know, it, 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 you have a life of not distinguishing yourself. You even write in the book when you when you quit high school, you walked away from it. You'd go to the library every day, I just know. sit there, and the school never noticed you quit. Yeah, not one of your teachers realized yeah. you no were gone. No one noticed I wasn't there. Wow. Does and that give you this incredible, horrible self opinion? Oh, of course. Yeah, you have no. You you feel like a snail in life, right? Yes. As if you deserve nothing. Uh, yes. Right. And and also the fact that. I leave school and I'm hanging out in the library. If they, you figure, if you leave school, you know you're gonna get stoned. You're gonna watch right. porn films. <laughs> you went stuff. to the library. Yeah, yeah. You I don't was go hanging. there. You had no one to hang so out with. I might as well have been in school. And your like parents, that. they weren't notified. Yeah, nobody yeah. cared. And then when you and then when they realized you left school, they were like, yeah. okay, so yeah. who cares? Yeah. I mean, nobody cared about you. Oh yes. <laughs> I mean, it's an incredible life. In fact. You talk about how you didn't distinguish yourself on Saturday Night Live in your new book, Rubber Balls and Liquor. Uh, what a name. What a distinguished yes. title. Even what an bug, intellectual I am. Uh, are you proud of... The, well, I'll get to that in a second, but are you proud of the book? I mean, when people write a book, they go, wow, I'm really proud of it. Like, do you have it on your mantle? Do you have a mantle? Do you, do you bother <laughs> do buying a shelf? Do you have a chair? Uh, do you have the book somewhere special now that you hold it in your hands and, the, and look at it as an accomplishment? The funny thing is, I like the way it looks. Yeah. I like the cover. I like the hot... They had a hot-looking model whose legs I sat between I the I saw the day. cover, yeah. And I like that. 
and I like holding the book, right. whether or how the book. Uh, oh, Publishers Weekly liked it. Did you read the book? Not. Did you actually, after you were done, go through it all? Or you just can't I, even bear to read it. I. I was forced to read the book because right. it's like after it, you think it's completed and your homework, like the worst homework assignment of your life right. is writing this. So you got no joy out of it. No. no. And then it's like they go, okay, we got to check for uh, any mistakes, anything you want to change. And I thought... I have to read this book. Again. <laughs> I, I don't want to read other people's books. I sure as shit don't want to read mine. Isn't that a great quote for the back of the book? Yes. I don't want to read this book. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey. Yes. So do you expect anyone to buy the book, or are you just kind of like, I don't even care if they buy the book? I mean, it's, it's, you're so relaxed about all yeah. of this. Yeah. I was shocked because you got a part in Eddie Murphy's movie. Um, oh, uh, Beverly Hills Beverly Cop Hills 2. Cop 2. Eddie Murphy worked with you on Saturday Night Live. He spent an entire year of Saturday Night Live working with you. And when he showed up on the set of Beverly Hills Cop and saw you, he goes, don't I know you from somewhere? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Is that's, that true? That, that's in the book. <laughs> yeah. But yet you say, I mean, imagine this guy worked with you for a year. This is how little you did on Saturday Night, you Night know, Live. I, I did something about mm. a year or two ago was this uh, video of um, Jack and the Beanstalk. Right. And on it were um, uh, Christopher Lloyd, who, although I'd never met him before, the both of us were the lead voices for years in the Cyber Chase right. cartoon. So he had to have known he was working with Gilbert Gottfried. He had to have seen me on TV. And I couldn't wait to meet him and how excited he'd be that we finally meet. Because we're, <laughs> we're the two yeah. stars of Cyber Chase for like a, over 10 years. Right. And then the other person on the show was Katie Segal, who was the wife on <laughs> Marriage with Children, who I was literally pressed against in a life raft for an entire episode. Right. And when both of them walked in, I went over and I said hi, and they both looked at me like they A had... A stranger. Yeah, yeah, like how did he get on the studio It's lot? amazing. Uh, to yeah. be, was this your whole life that people just don't notice you? Oh, you're, yeah. You're, you're, almost, <laughs> you're so unimpressive you're that almost they not don't here. know you. Is that why it bothered you when you were in the hospital and you were almost on death's door? That, oh, and you oh, knew yeah. that no one cared. Yeah. I mean, no one ever cares. About, I mean, Eddie Murphy worked with you for a year and said, don't I know you from yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's incredible. I didn't know you were all. You had the job to be in the Dick Tracy movie, which at the time was a big movie. Oh yes, uh, you were going to be uh, Mumbles, but yeah. at the last minute they went with uh, Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. That would have been Th a huge this, break. This was one of those showbiz type stories. Yeah, because it's like they were saying to me, "Oh, you're the only person we want for this. Right. You're, we, you're the first choice." When we were writing this part, we were picturing. <laughs> This is a Gilbert Gottfried role. Right. And and then at the last <laughs> second, my agent calls and says, oh, they're going with someone else. And I said, who are they going with? Because I was the only person they wanted. And he goes, uh, Dustin Hoffman. And I think, so was there ever a last second thing? Oh, who are we going to get? Like this acting legend or Gilbert Gottfried? We, did, did you meet with Warren Beatty? Who, oh, who yeah, was the director? yeah. I met him. He he yeah. was a fan for a short while. Right. And, <laughs> but, he almost gave you the yeah, part. Yeah, Dustin but, Hoffman but, said he would do like, it. Like right. I said in the book, um, the only way my name and Dustin Hoffman's name could ever be mentioned in the same breath is I've seen Gilbert Gottfried's acting and it's no Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> Are you actually touring around doing different uh, appearances yeah, to promote be, the book? Yeah, I'm going to be going on a tour, yeah. Are you going to be on The View, did uh, someone say? Oh, yeah, that's uh, today. Oh, that's today you're going to go do yes, The View? Yes, that scares oh, me. Oh, my God. Those yentas are going yeah, to yell yenta. at you for making Japanese jokes. I, I know. That's the agenda. You got to well, know that. Yes. They yell at him. They're going to yell at him. Whoopi defends Robin Williams. I mean, not yeah, Robin Williams. Yeah, but this is Gilbert. Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopi ain't defending him. <laughs> Whoopi defends Mel Gibson. He might be able to do something for her. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried's book, Rubber Balls and Liquor. See? See what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. It's in stores today. Uh, Gilbert, believe it or not, this is a rare opportunity. <laughs> will be... Signing <laughs> copies of his book Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Now, usually you charge a lot of money for your signature. Oh, yes. <laughs> In fact, you charge for everything.
<laughs> so uh, you'll be there uh, Thursday night at 7 at the Barnes & Noble in Union Square, Manhattan. And you will sign things for free, right? Uh, yes. Right. Well, Your no, book. I'll sign it if they buy the book. Cause, right. Because God knows, when they, once they hear Gilbert Gottfried, it's a mob scene. <laughs> Do you expect anyone to show up at this? <laughs> and don't miss Gilbert tomorrow night at 7.30. If you go to the book signing. Yes. Uh, and no one is there. Yeah. I mean, it's a complete embarrassment. Three people show up. Will you just get up and leave, or will you sit there for the full hour that you're committed to sitting uh, there? Yeah, yeah. I think I'll probably pick up a book and hide my face behind it, like reading it. The wor- worst book signing uh, Gary describes is, uh, he was at some bookstore, I forget who it was, there was no one there. All the employees had to go on the line oh and pretend to God. be on the line. That well, can be I'm really pre- bad. I'm predicting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, whatever goes wrong will happen to you. Uh, so uh, you'll be on The View. Yeah, it's- uh, why don't you refer to Sherry Shepard as Star Jones the entire time? <laughs> really go out in a, in a blaze of glory. Really give it to those yentas. What are you going to wear? Are you wearing this on the show? I, I, I guess so. Yeah, you don't get, wear a jacket ever. You don't get, May, Maybe, yeah. or maybe I'll wear a regular pair of slacks. Does your wife ever say to you, listen, oh, she, before you she leave? she was yelling at me today. Yeah, did she say to you, yeah, she's a gorgeous girl. Did I, she ever say to you, Gilbert, put a suit on? I, I was throwing on my usual attire of a totally wrinkled, worn-out shirt. Right. And she said, no, you're not wearing that. And do you ever take someone's, like, the, I see Jerry Seinfeld shows up with a tie, and he always has a oh. suit. Oh my God, yes, you yes. will never try to upgrade well, your I, image. I feel it's important. You <laughs> owe it to your public. To look good. Yes. yes. And, oh, and my Twitter account is at Real Gilbert. And the, the book is called Rubber Balls and Liquor. Uh, good luck on The View oh, and with all your touring around. Oh, yes, around. and there's GilbertGottfried.com. And I also have a video on Funny or Die called Too Soon. Saw that. Oh, yes. Uh, very good. Do you ever say to your wife, I love you? I'll leave you with that thought. Do you ever tell her, I love you? Uh, no, but don't give her any ideas. No, you yes. never <laughs> say, do you ever get emotional with her? Do you ever? Did you cry at the uh, birth just, of your children? Just, just when I'm angry. I see. I, did your wife? I say to you, why didn't you mention me in the book? Why didn't you oh, talk yeah, about me yeah. at all? Yeah, and you say what? I, I, I point to the very back of the book where I say something like, behind every great man, there's an annoying Jew bitch. <laughs> 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 say, get back to writing the book. Uh, the, the one story I, I didn't understand, there were two stories, actually, I, I wasn't sure about. And you say in the book that not every story is true. Do you say that to protect yourself legally, but they really are true? Well, it's it's like I do get I do start out stories and then I do end with like uh, being filthy and dirty. So I see. Like, yeah. Was your wife disgusted with the tsunami jokes, or was she supportive during uh, the whole crisis? Uh, I don't know. I think she was saying, "Okay, now you're going a little too far." Right. She was scared during yeah. the whole thing. Although, right. although when you really look at them, one day I'll have to put them out again because most of them are so just dumb. But at the time, did you find yourself saying, yeah. "Like, were you trying to justify all this to your wife?" Going, "I don't understand. After all, I make these jokes yeah, all the time," yeah, and, yeah. and she's like, "Who cares?" Right. To, to this day, yeah, I kind of think. I have made such worse stuff. I mean, on this show and like. But were you running around the house saying that to your wife? All this rationale? Yeah, Yeah, I can imagine what was going on there. Yeah, where were they then? Where yeah. were they? Oh, yeah. Where um, was the outrage? Yeah. <laughs> it says also in your book you were once on The Tonight Show and you got trapped in your dressing room. Uh, yes. Yeah, no, in, in, my, in the bathroom. Of the of dressing, dressing room. room. And you dug a hole through the well, door? Yeah. It was, there were, it was a sliding door. It got stuck. Yeah. And, and I started tugging on it and pulling <laughs> and banging. And usually when I'm sitting there trying to relax in the dressing room, there's a knock on the door every three seconds right. with someone. This time there wasn't, and I'm pounding and panicking. I finally get it open a little, and I see a phone there, right. and I reach my arm out, and I'm just half an inch from the phone, <laughs> so I can't get that. This is like that movie with the rock climber had to cut his own oh, arm yes, off. yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> and then finally I see this metal uh, trash can there inside the bathroom, and more out of anger to make noise or something, I'm pounding on the door, and I notice it's chipping, and I see a tiny bit of light. <laughs> Talk about a movie. Yeah. A tiny ray of light comes in the bathroom. Oh. And so I start pounding and pounding, and I'm cracking off more of the door, and I'm ripping the rest with my hand. I climb through a hole in the wall. Like a dog. You, you, yes. Do you think they intentionally locked you in there? Like, I is it think goof? so. Who knows what they it, did? It was, it was really, it became like die hard. Then it was like... <laughs> I have to say there was one touching story in yes. there that I read that really moved <laughs> yes. me, okay. where you described that uh, there was a time in your life that you were working um, at a movie theater, and you would time the uh, sex scenes... <laughs> 
<laughs> you would time the sex scenes oh, in the movie. Was, that, Where was this? That, this was, I was working the concessions right. when uh, in the theaters when Eck was Oh, Broadway was show, there. right. Yeah, and Equist. it was Richard Burton and the lead role, and it was Equist. It was this award. And I just had a time. There was one part where a girl gets naked on stage. Right. And I could, there was like that inside alarm clock in my head where I didn't even have to pay attention. And I ran upstairs and would catch the nude scene. And you I, knew exactly but, what time the nude scene occurred, uh, yes. and you would figure out how to do it. Yeah. Also, Gilbert describes he once worked in a, uh, uh, like at a, he was working at a club or something. And uh, a group of Mexican guys had figured out how to climb through the rafters and yes. watch women go to the bathroom in the bathroom. Yeah, really? I, I had seen them. It was this this really decrepit club that, and the backstage mm -hmm. area was like just it looked like plywood walls tacked together. It was right. really awful. Yes, and they there was like. These Mexicans were climbing up like rats in the crawl space between the ceiling and the top of these wobbly rooms. And finally, I'm looking at them, and they don't know how to speak English. And they, like, with a crazed smile, they invite me up. They wave their hand. Like, they see they got a fellow pervert. Oh, yes. yes. And they boost me up. And I don't even know where I'm going, why yeah. I'm following them. And we're, like, both we're crawling like rats with me and a group of Mexicans. <laughs> and they keep looking back and smiling at me. With, as I say, like, they're smiling at me in Spanish. And then finally, there's this area where they put cardboard down to be comfortable to lean down, and they had got a whole system. Yes, yeah, they, they had it all set up. <laughs> they had they had punched holes <laughs> in the ceiling there, which was easy because the the ceilings were like were like cardboard, yeah. and it, the walls were shaking as we we're crawling <laughs> on. And and I I looked, they point with a giant smile, like look in the hole, and you, know, you could see women sitting on the toilet. Oh. <laughs> and were they disgusting looking or were they hot? I mean, did you feel some? I mean, you're looking at the tops of. Them. <laughs> did you feel? Did you feel terrible about this? Were or you happy? Maybe they had shown it to uh, you. I mean, because I would think I, this is a terrible on? violation to stare at women while they go to the I, bathroom. I, I thought this is <laughs> certainly something different. Right. <laughs> and so you enjoy? Did you, you beat never off? Reported them? <laughs> did these guys beat off? Or uh... I'm sure they were. I was like getting scared because the walls were shaking, and I thought. I could just see myself crashing <laughs> through the ceiling and would killing you, some Would you girl. watch the women wiping their asses? And uh, did, did you find that instructional or interesting? Yeah. <laughs> How long did you stay out there? This is some book. You know, it's a, you know, Gilbert's book is a real rags to almost something story. <laughs> it's great. All right, look. Uh, let's uh, just say uh, you've yes. lived the life of a three-year-old now <laughs> for most of your life. Uh, you're a terrific guy. Gilbert Gottfried, I wish you tremendous luck with your book, Rubber Balls and Liquor. You will not be hearing him as the voice of the Affleck dog ever, ever again. Who knows? Maybe they'll come did back it, to you. How did it feel when you saw every comedian on earth being offered an opportunity to get your job? Right. Oh, yeah, that, that shows how everyone the respect. Yeah, they really care about you. You know, sometimes people go, I'm not auditioning. I'm I in support of Gilbert. That. Gilbert, leave us with one final Japanese victims joke. If you <laughs> You're so well known for that. But b better yet, don't leave it with Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're going to do the view, huh? Oh, yeah. This is going to yell at you, right? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I don't know about that. Well, Joy will be. Uh... Joy will defend you as a comedian. Yes, yes. And then a little bit of to beat you up. Oh, yeah. don't you go, I think he's disgusting. I don't agree with what he did, but he is a comedian. I will defend that. Yeah, right. that way you could be on both sides of the right. fence at once. And Barbara yeah. will just take on that queenish tone. So Gilbert. She, she probably won't even be there. And then even comics who defended me, I saw them doing that work. Yeah. Well, I thought it was disgusting and wrong, but he does have a right. <laughs> and a right. And yeah, I thought, okay, yeah, great. come on. You know? How about, how about hey, he's a comedian? Who gives a fuck? Oh, it's yeah. funny. It's Joe. He's trying to make it be humorous. Good luck. Good luck with the book, Gilbert. Oh, thank you. Gilbert. Yes. Rubber balls and liquor. Yes. It's really a story of triumph when you think about it. Uh, yes. Yes. It's it's a story. Uh, it was the original Rubber Balls and Liquor was written by John Steinbeck. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you consider any alternate titles? To, uh, uh, yeah, there was. It was originally going to be called uh, "Gag Reflex," <laughs> and uh, so I thought that's good because it's a blowjob joke. That sounds. 
but I thought rubber balls and liquor was even more disgusting and immature. Really encompassed the full yeah. Gilbert Godfrey story. Is there any way they could order out for uh, cupcakes while I'm here? Yeah, you picked the wrong just, day. You're one day yeah, early. just so I could spit in them or put my dick in them or something. Do you want to come back tomorrow just to do that? Yeah, yeah, I might. <laughs> Did you get your own cupcake? Yes. From? <laughs> Called the, I stuck it in the cupcake. Yes. <laughs> now, Gilbert, you, you uh, highlight a, a particular story of uh, an encounter you had while in the hospital with Howard. Ah, uh, yes, yes. He he reads the whole thing, I, and I, I, it's funny. It's like you, you know these. I'm, I've been on Howard like more times than uh, Howard has, I think, and yet in the book I have a mention for like about. Uh, half a page or something. And it's not the most complimentary story yes. you tell. Them. You make them... Well, that's the way I talk. Yes. <laughs> He's a, a bastard of a friend. That oh, yes. Really be in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I hope many show up at your at your signing and best of luck. Yes, thank you. I hope the story of triumph continues. Yes, and I got a free bottle of water out of it. Till the next time when you can spit in some cupcakes. Okay, wheels, go ahead. I was going to say, Gilbert was awesome yesterday listening to the playback. You were laughing like, you know, like almost crying laughing. Well, when Gilbert does that impression of Groucho, the old Groucho, which is the one I'm interested in. The best. Because I remember that as a kid watching Groucho on, like, Dick Cavett show, and he was fucking 900 years old, and he would just go into these long stories, and Dick Cavett was hanging on every word, and meanwhile, they were long, boring stories. Well, all of them used to do that. Yeah. You know, even mm -hmm. Johnny Carson and, and Merv Griffin, right. they so respected him <laughs> that they, would they wouldn't interrupt him. Yeah. I know. I, I've had that experience <laughs> on the radio where there's someone who's of great importance comes in. <laughs> And then they don't really say anything. But or their you, timing's gone right. and the stories don't have an ending. And the fact that Gilbert does an impression of that is just the funniest yeah. thing to me. I mean, all of his impressions are funny. But I got a weird thing going on with Gilbert. And I don't know really, I'm going to have to deal with it. What's the weird thing? The weird thing is that the last time Gilbert was here, when, when Gilbert leaves and when any guest leaves, there's always cameras on. We have Howard TV, Howard 100 News. They go out there and they ask a few questions. And I guess the... Uh, the last time Gilbert was on, before, the last time before this, he went out in the hall and he started spitting on all the cupcakes that we eat here. Yeah. And it was really disgusting because, first of all, we get these beautiful cupcakes. And, you know, the, the, the staff really looks forward to him. So he would, like, spit on. And it was really gross. I didn't think it was particularly funny, but okay. He was did trying it one... to do some shtick for the camera. Right. I got that. Well, this time he leaves. He walks out. And he's, I don't want to see the clip, guys, because I'll throw up. What did he do? He walked out and he just started spitting all over the walls and spitting oh. every like spitting what? everywhere. For all time's sake. Oh no, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Clean that up. <laughs> Clean that up, please. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. And you know, my first reaction is he must really be angry with me. I mean, not on any conscious level, but he must just be really depressed and angry because when it's like spitting on me, you know, it's it's completely disrespectful. I know he'd probably say how he's just trying to be funny, but you're kind of it feels like a disrespect to me. You got to throw him out, Howard. That is. Well, is he no, spitting at uh, the Tonight Show? Is no. he spitting at Letterman? No, and he didn't spit at The View the other day either. Right, okay. It, Howard, it was so disgusting. What was he doing exactly? I didn't see it, but I just saw w when it was done. There was one right where we keep the cupcakes, where we put all the food yeah. out. There was a big one there, and there was a big one on the wall, and then there was a big one on the ground. Oh. And it was one of those ones, I, I'm not, I, you know, I don't want to gross you up, but like it had color. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like you couldn't miss it. So he's hawking loogies. Yeah, he's not, and it was uh, just, it was, yeah. it was. And it, and, I'm going like, to throw up. And when I found out about it, like Tim was living. Well, Tim's right. I mean, you know, because Tim told me they had to call a special cleaning crew yeah, in to clean course. it. And you don't had just to, wipe that up. Yeah, somebody had to clean that shit. Tim and goes, you know this what? is bullshit. And you want to talk about being elitist. That's horse shit. I mean, you know, you know you, a woman has to come in and get on her hands and knees with gloves and clean that. Yeah, with special chemicals. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel some compassion for the person who's going to have to clean up your mess. I mean, how do you think you get rid of that shit? And, you know, to me, I have compassion for that person. That's not an easy way to make a living. Yeah, but there's absolutely no reason for that. 
That's not funny. Right. Yeah, I did not. I didn't get the joke at all. I didn't. Right. I mean, I, I, I knew that he thought it was weird that, like, when he spit in the cupcakes, I didn't think that was funny. I didn't either. But okay, uh, it happened once. I think he was trying to go for something. And you know, least, it didn't but, work. I mean, uh, the spit yeah. bit he should drop. And at least the yeah. cupcakes are something in a box you can take and throw in the garbage. This was yeah. really yeah, like on our a, stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, is, I, that I, I get the, is that why he hasn't been in in a long time? Why not just come in and shit on the floor? Hey, Maybe he's planning to. I don't think he wants to show his dick. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was pretty gross. and Well, that's sad. Yeah, so I think... He's another one of those guys. You know, you're having that discussion with him yesterday about his inability to capitalize on his own talents. Right. And he says, well, nobody's ever said I wasn't self-destructive. And there you go. Yeah. It hasn't changed. All right. Thanks, Wheels. Can dig up a couple of these ones that are coming in about you and Ronnie, the limo driver. Ronnie inspiring songs. Yeah, well, you know, I heard him on the wrap-up show, and he gets defensive. It's weird, It's weird that whole wrap-up show thing, because he gets defensive, and people aren't even goofing on him. I don't know what's going on with him. Dude. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, here it is. You don't have to say it to her all the time. Howard is asking, are you in love with her? And either you are or you aren't. Oh, well, I said I said it a few times, so what does that mean? Do I have to keep repeating it? It's not like I'm not... <laughs> But but if, does, does John, are you, John, are you in love with your wife? Absolutely. Right. That's, that's the answer. Yeah. Okay. So are you in love with Steph? I like her a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> See, when you say that, Ronnie, it sounds to me like you're keeping your options open. No, I'm not keeping. No, uh, right. I'm with her right now. Okay. Uh, not with her. <laughs> I, I always I always question her. See, I have this hang up, and I talk to my shrink about this. Okay. I have this hang up. Why is she with me? And what does she say? Because she loves me. She goes, I question whether she loves me. Because I think sometimes he thinks he's me. You know how people always rap about, like, because my famous, that's why Beth's with me. But he's, he's nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he goes, I question why she's with me. Yeah, it hasn't a lo- there are a lot of women who've wanted to be with Ronnie for... If anybody really, uh... yeah, for, for to get something. <laughs> if, he doesn't even understand the question. If he really listened to the question... You question why she wants to be. If any woman ever really loves someone, it's you. You're not famous. You're not. Uh, you're I, not a, I understand a rich man. that, but I still have that hang up because I saw shit that my father went through. Okay, what'd your father go? Not you, my father. No, it's me. Not you, it's dude. Me. No, my father. No, not you. It's not and your you, father. Don't you say a word to me, okay? Who? Because you, whenever something is going on, you know how to attack me. And Robin, about, and I say whatever or whatever it is, <laughs> He's and, crazy. and you and you you contradict me. Whatever I say, you know what? You when you're under the gun from him, all you do is sit there and laugh. You can't answer either. You got no you got no comeback to him either. So don't even don't even go there with me with anything. What has this got to do with me and you? Because I've been I was listening to this He's shit. He's nuts. This, because I was listening to you're this nuts. shit this morning. I am you're fucking, fucking nuts. nuts. You really are. Yeah. I am fucking I, nuts. I was laughing. Everybody fucking I here is out of their fucking him. minds. You're nuts. Everybody who works here is nuts. Ronnie, In their the own guy asked way, you a okay? question. Why can't you say you love Stephanie? And, and it's then got you nothing go, to do with you. Why do I think it's why right away you think it's you? Because you just gave it. I said shit with you my father, you not with it's you. It's not your father. Yes, it is. Your father was famous? No, I'm not famous. The woman your father was with wasn't after his money. He had no fucking money. How do you know? Because I know. Where's what? his money? He had nothing. I yeah, know where shit. he lived. He had <laughs> yeah. shit. But still. You're comparing yourself to me. No, I'm not. I'm not f- you Dude, question how, whether you she loves you? What do you have? She's not a gold digger. What is she with you for then? Yeah. Don't an, don't talk. Don't talk. I'm just asking ask a good no, question. question. Ask All right, him I'll talk. You ask. I'll ask yeah. the same don't question. Don't talk. <laughs> Ronnie, you question why your girlfriend is with you. That's just my hang up, okay? okay. I'm sorry. What it's do not you got have that she's after? You. you got nothing. What is she with you for if it's not because she You're loves not a millionaire, you. you're not famous. She's not What is she after? You're know. comparing yourself to me. No, I'm That's not. That's what people what say you... about me. They go, oh, Beth's with him oh, because he's famous and he's rich. Please, what not... are you? Well, why do you mean you question why Stephanie's with you? You're a fucking limo driver. Yeah, okay. Th- she loves you. How clearly. do you know? How do you know she really loves me? She you loves know? you because you're. She a, you're she's you not that? after anything. It's fucking words. That's all it is. Well, she's after you know? money. 
Does no, she want I don't to know, know what your she, car? I don't know what she, she, what do you think she's I don't after? know if she's after anything. What, it's just something in my head. Okay, so okay. in your mind, what do you think she could it's be not after? you. Why don't you what think is she after? You. The, the, Nobody ever thinks doesn't surround around you with me, okay? What does she think you're after? Your apartment? Those no. those Playboy mud flaps? Yeah, what she, now. That big tire in your basement? <laughs> yeah. What do you think she'd be after? <laughs> why do you think it's you, though? I mean, it's not you. You're not listening again. This is why you're funny. You don't even know why you're funny. I'm not funny. You I'm not funny. You say she's after you. I didn't say something. That's where your fear. I don't what is it she could be after? You're comparing yourself to me. Yeah, in no, my I'm case, not. someone could be after something. What's she I'm after? I'm not comparing You're myself to you. bottles of Mambo? What is she after? I'm not comparing myself yes, to you. Yes, you are. I am not. It's got nothing to do with your father. What has oh, she gained? It. What, what has she, she gained? The woman, tell me this, the that, women, the woman who was with your father... Was it after anything? Yes, she was. Okay, what was, what was she, she after? She, whatever money he did have. Money, she was he had after. three cents. That guy. Boy, whatever. Was she, um, yeah, she, she's a real gold she, digger. She was, she was digging her way right to the middle. I discussed this with <laughs> Stephanie. She knows all about it. Okay, I'm not it's even not about you. you. Of course it is. Oh God, why is everything why can't about you? See you? Because you're comp- you're putting yourself in my no, position. No, I'm not. What? Oh. What is she after? Dude, I'm, t- she I'm date, telling she you. She could date I'm a police you, officer and have the same I'm thing. I'm telling you how I feel. She could date that a piece of delivery guy. It's not about guy. you. It's about what I saw my own man go through. And you keep telling me it's about you. Stick with me and I'll show you every Rick's cabaret. What has she what gotten out fuck? of this? What, in other words, what could she get out of being with you? I don't know. Money? What has she been grasping at so far that you still have this feeling? She's a young, pretty girl. She could get a lot of richer guys yeah, than you. You're could. not exactly the richest exactly. guy on the planet. Is no. she pushing you to do something? No, absolutely not. Then it so doesn't then, seem like she wants anything. So then anything. why would you make this statement that... Because it's just something in my head, Howard. That's, but that's all it is. But that's not your situation. Oh. Of course she loves you. You're, you're a limo driver. You're not, you're not, you're not David Arquette. I you're didn't not, say I was you're not Mel I didn't Gibson. say that. Did you're I not, say that? Y- in other words, you're, you're a working man. You're a hardworking man. Yeah, okay. What is she going to get out I of being know. with you? I don't know. I don't What's know. It's just something in my head, okay? And she's hanging out so long to get it. He Boy. goes, I always question whether she really loves me. I, I think he thinks he's famous like me. That's Are you the only crazy? Thing I can think. Right, Robin? Well, I'm trying to think. Does oh, she go around God. telling Why? everybody she's Ronnie's girlfriend? And you know who I go out with? Doors open? Yeah, she what? goes, you know who I go out with? Ronnie the limo driver. You know what everyone's reaction is? <laughs> oh, so? so you're after so you're after his fame and wealth. Right. Oh, come on in. Let's um, yeah. close down the store because you're here. Yeah, yeah. Pretty woman. <laughs> Let's go on a pretty woman shopping spree. You got all that Ronnie money. Oh my God, Jesus! I can't. You ask me a question I and I answer it, and it's not good enough for you. I don't know if you know this, but my boyfriend is verified on Twitter. Wow. Yeah. With seventy four thousand followers. Wow. I'm after his Jeez. verification. You know he's stop verified. it, man. You know why? Why you don't you don't even I, hear the question? Yeah, but no, I'm I trying to, on the wrap. I'm show. trying to answer you, but it's you, a ridiculous answer. You're well, that's my she, answer. It's she, not you. It's so got why is she with you with if you. she doesn't love ask, you? Call her and what ask is she her. How many after? times have I Are said to her? Are you secretly rich? Yeah, do, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe I am. Maybe I am. I know you he's don't know not. What I have. No, you don't know what I have. I do know. Yeah, you don't know. Believe me, you I know. know. No. I've seen everything. Is he like a really wealthy guy who just decided yeah, exactly. I'm going to drive a limo? I'm going to drive like a limo. Cars. Yes. Yes. You know what? I didn't want to tell you this. <laughs> Good. Ronnie's worth seven billion dollars. <laughs> right. Oh, exactly. That's why. Right. He's worried. Actually, I own all 23 Ricks clubs. Yeah. Nobody knows. Now but you act I like understand. you do. Understand. Yeah. Now I understand. He probably told her that. Yeah. I didn't tell anybody anything of the sort. Now stop it. All right. Thank I, don't, you. I don't know why you don't get it through your head. It's just something that, that I have a feeling about. I'm sorry. <laughs> God. And all you do is laugh. I got okay? it. Okay. When the, you're under you're the funny. gun, well, when you're under the gun, look, all you, you do is laugh. Ronnie, your perception is so off that it's just. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's I'm funny. I'm always wrong. So I am always wrong. Your I know. perceptions are so out the window. I know. Yeah, out the window. Off. I'm fucking I can't even, crazy. I can't even explain. I'm telling you, I'm fucking nuts. <laughs> all, right, all right. Goodbye. You're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hear him on the rapper oh, show. Oh my it's the goodness! Greatest. Oh, I, I mean, can't believe that he oh. believes somebody's after him for. <laughs> I still can't figure out what the four is. And for this, what he saw his father go through that. No, he didn't. Father didn't go through anything. His father was a divorced man. He had a girlfriend. She was devoted to him, even when he was ill. I remember. I we, listen. I know Ronnie. Right. All these years. Well, that woman was hanging out, uh, waiting until yeah. the bitter yeah. end. And you should see what she got. I to think she, get what was there. I think she inherited a fourteen thousand dollar condo <laughs> after after putting in thirty years. Oh, with him. okay. Yeah.
own place. It's what not it? like she, she's whatever, poor. What, you your da- whatever your doubts are, what would they be? Right, wait, here, wait, you got to hear this one. <laughs> are you guys in a monogamous relationship? Yeah, according to her, we are. Do you feel like you're free to see other women? No. Okay, so I'm you're. Not seeing, I'm not seeing anybody else now. If you had sex with another woman, would you tell her? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm going to tell her. No, I'm not going to tell her. <laughs> would that be considered cheating? Yeah. Okay, so but I'm do- not, I didn't. No, that's fine. I, that's what I'm, I'm just curious, like what you guys' boundaries are. We ha- we we have we don't have any boundaries. Well, you have that boundary. Wait, so you're yeah. both you're both free to basically no, do no, what you no, want to no. do. No. He goes, no. He's crazy. We don't have any boundaries, but I can't do this and I can't do that. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> He's funny, man. He's the best on this show. Better than anyone. Oh my goodness. Oh no, not in that case, no. What, what in what case are you? I don't. Leave well, does that go leave both? Me alone does, already. Does that go okay. both ways? Like, if you can sort of do your thing, can she do her thing? Are you comfortable with that? No, she. I mean, she goes and hangs out, and she goes out with her friends. I don't know what she does. Can I, I take her out? No. <laughs> right. You would be the last person. And by the way, that has to do no, no matter how old she is. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Why? Why did you call Howard out on the, mom. on the age thing? You feel like he's picking on your he always, age? He always picks on my age, and, and you can't say he doesn't. He says he doesn't, but he does. He brings it up a lot. You're the oldest guy on the show, so okay, I think he brushes your balls about that. Whatever. Yeah, but, but, but Ronnie, again, like in like in junior high school. If you poke somebody and you see it bothers him, then you just keep poking. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but, but when I do it back to him, he doesn't like it. Because it's he, his He's show. old also, okay? <laughs> but not as old as you. No, but I don't point still, that out to you. But he's still old. And he doesn't want to be old either. I don't, you think I enjoy being old? No. I'm just living my life, whatever's left of it. I think okay? you're enjoying yourself very yeah, much. I am. I am. I am. I had a great time in Florida. We had an awesome time. Now, it's one of the best vacations I've had in a long time. When marriage came up, you said that's definitely out. But that mo- I can tell you right here, Hefner, he's you, Hefner. No, he's still being you yeah, from I know. a few years right. ago. Right, I know he's still into that. He's holding that back, that prize, right. of the Mund name. Right, no questions asked. That's out. But it's the still- moving in thing is is on the table. It's a possibility. We've talked about it. You've been it- together four years. Yeah. When you say marriage is out, because like, I know a lot of people say it, but they still say, okay, I want to become a couple, and I want to live together, and I want our, the idea to be everything the same as marriage, just not officially married. Is that what you mean? Listen, if she moves in, that's it. There's no other relationship. There's nothing. There's, no, there's not going to be engagements. There's not going to be put a ring on a finger for 10 years. There's not going to be any kind of... But the Diamond idea, ring. But, but if she does There's, move in, the idea might be this is our lifelong partners. <laughs> as long as it might last. Do you think at one point she may want that stuff, though, Ronnie? What? A ring. She says no. And I told her it will be no. And <laughs> if she insists, you know, that it's going to be no, you know, that she wants it eventually, then it's, it's done. Wow. She's a saint. <laughs> I told her no. Look at him. <laughs> But those guys, those guys on Bubba said he looks like that mustache is from the Civil War reenactment. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I yeah. think, I guess he's Ron Perlman. Right, not, not Ron, Ron Munt. Munt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's worried. He's worried she's after him for something. Oh, boy. What could she be after? She's with him. She's working three jobs, this girl. I know her. Yeah. She works her ass off. And he's worried that she doesn't love him. I don't think the Mun name opens even his door. <laughs> he has right. To open he's it worried. Himself. He's he's. I think he thinks he's famous and no, I, rich or something. He's living some sort of delusion. Something he's got, and she's right. gonna get it. She's gonna get. What it. are you talking about? <laughs> Why don't you got, just change your name to Howard? She goes. What? Howard. Howard. H O W A R D. Howard. What? Are, why? Are you crazy? <laughs> You're crazy. Okay. Listen. She she has her own thing. She does her own thing. She's got. She, she wants the mun name. She works two jobs. I know. Believe me, I know. You know. She's a hardworking girl. She ain't getting anything out of being with you. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, she looks like yeah. a gold digger from the description. Right, and she's not. <laughs> I can see that. I don't. I think she just wants I, to be. I, a, I think get, she just wants to be a mun. That's I it, don't. You know, the, you know I how don't the, get you, man. I really don't. I, I don't. It's just, I know you don't. It's really something that's in my fucking head. I'm sorry. It's got nothing to do with you. Sure. I understand. I told you about this a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> you did? I forgot. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, don't tell me we didn't talk about this. All right. We did. Okay. 
And you agreed with him? Years ago. Years ago. He's driving. I don't want to crash. He'll drive me into a lake, and I can't get out. You know what? You know what? He's so full of shit, because we talk about stuff all the time, and he'll deny it from now until next year, okay? (laughs) I'm not denying anything. Who knows what you say? Yeah, okay. All right. She's still trying to make it out. She ain't a gold digger. She's a dirt digger, because believe me, you got nothing. I don't know what you're worried about. You, you don't have some mass uh, mass fortune that she's it's after. It's got nothing to do with that. So why do you think she'd be with you if she didn't love you? I what don't is she in? know. What I'm do you t- think? What do you think she's looking for? Yeah, she's I not. Don't, a, I don't. It can't know. be the Mun name. The Mun name I, closes doors. It doesn't right, open doors. Yeah. I, listen. I don't People know. hear Mun, they close the door. Where in the yeah. world is he such a big shot? I don't know. Maybe I'm the not, Rick's Cabaret. I didn't say I was a big shot. When did I say At Rick's I was a big Cabaret, shot? Rick's Cabaret, he what walks in. No, I didn't say. When did I say it was a big shot? Bragging that this is her man? My man is. <laughs> I, listen, Ricky, I don't yeah, love Ricky him. Man. Yeah, I don't love Ricky him, man. but when he dies, I'm going to inherit his right. empire. I mean, she's sitting there. She's talking yeah. about what a wonderful lover you are. She really enjoys me. I understand that. She's a great kid. She's a great girl, man. Kid. That's what's cool about it. You're a good kid. Hey, kid, get over here. Stop One it. day you play your cards right, you'll inherit my uh, nothing. Right. You'll inherit this. Uh, you my d- you my just... NASCAR memorabilia. <laughs> you just don't get it. Sorry. What don't I get? Nothing. What we am I missing? can't get it. I'm leaving. What is she after? I didn't say she was after you anything. Said you, don't, you said you don't think she loves you. She, 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 you I have feeling... a I said I didn't. I said. You question I it. I question it. Right. So what would she be after? When will you get I an answer? I didn't say she was after in anything. In your fantasies, why is she there? Since she I don't know. Love you. That's what I'm trying to figure I out in my head. I don't know what you think you've got that somebody's going to give I up their entire life for. I didn't say that. All right. I didn't say that. I really got to know what Yeah, what I'm you depressed think now. They're after. Maybe I should go take some who, what how is many that? other women? Let me are drink after. some of that shit. What did you drink? I want to know. Many other I want to drink some. Are after Ronnie? Nobody. Maybe that, maybe, did you copyright that t- that phrase "topless"? To no, I did it? not. No, oh, I did. So she can't even inherit no, that. No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. Because dating Ronnie, Ronnie is her stepping stone to nowhere. Topless. <laughs> to topless. Who said she was is a stepping stone to anything? I'm saying. This is what you're you're saying topless. that this is what's it's going got, on. It's got nothing she to must do be with that. To you because of where she can get or no, what she I never can get. said that. I never said that. Did I ever say yes, that? Yes, you said I have a question of why she's with me. Yeah, exactly. But I didn't say that she's into it for getting money or whatever. Well, what would she be into I don't it for? No, what could she be into oh it for? Oh my God, well, man. Well, he does have a lot of Twitter followers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, she's going to inherit all of them. Do you go everywhere and people go, hey, there's Ronnie the limo driver? I no, mean, maybe that's what she's it after. happens, it happens. It does happen right. when we're out. Right, so maybe that's what she's after. Yeah, exactly. Mind. Right? Oh, okay, well, that makes sense. She wants to be... Yeah. She, <laughs> no, you're, you're so not, famous. I didn't say that. I never then, said that. Then what could that. it be? The, how could you I even, got nothing. You got nothing. You that's got it. Nothing. <laughs> so why would you be after? All right, listen. We all agree on that. All right. Thank well, you. Yeah. Before thank Nancy you. calls in and says she's sick of hearing me, let me go. You know the girl from yesterday. All right. All right. She doesn't like it. I'm you leaving. know, Ronnie has like over 600 skull T-shirts. Maybe that's what she's after. Ah. Yeah. God, Lord. <laughs> this is what I deal with all day. <laughs> he drives me around. He's going to lock up the windows and, and drive me into a lake. <laughs> and, and you're going to be laughing. Ron. Yo. Do you regret saying stuff like that that's in your head? Because when it comes back, like, on the next day after the no! wrap-up show and you're forced to defend what you... No! But when Howard breaks it down logistically, there's no reason to, to doubt her love or to... Um, say that again? When Howard breaks it down logically, Listen, you know, do it's it, like... Listen, do it. Listen to me. Okay? You're not in my head. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on in my life. What's gone on years before, okay? You don't know. So you can't even ask me that question. But I'm saying when Howard you, breaks it down. I don't care what Howard. He's not my fucking psychiatrist. He thinks he is, but he's not. He thinks everything revolves around him. It doesn't. Other people have lives. They have shit. They have problems. Their own problems, not his. Okay? Why, when Robin laughs, does it drive you so nuts? I mean, everyone laughs on the show. Everyone laughs at each other. <laughs> Fucking bald motherfucker is here now. Oh. Having a bad day, buddy? No! No, man, it just makes my Twitter followers go up. Oh, all right. You know? It's all just party. keep ha- hammer, man, hammer. Go ahead. It's all part of your master plan. Yeah, my master plan. Yeah. This is my What's master up? plan. Oh, yes, Sal, please come with me. <laughs> oh, you can't come and bother him. 
Well, Ron, everyone busts balls. Everyone laughs at one another. Why? Would Everybody's Robin... fucking nuts here. Don't you understand that? Well, why does Robin's cackle really? It just goes right through you. Because she sits there and knifes people left and right, through the back, through the neck. And then when it, she's getting on the fucking, you know, she's on the fire. All she does is sit there and laugh. She's got no answers. Listen to what went on this morning. Listen to the playback. All she did was laugh through the whole thing. She can't answer either. Isn't her, isn't, isn't part of Isn't her, what? Isn't part of her job, though, to fan the flames, to keep things yeah, kind of going? But she's as fucking crazy as everybody else around here, okay? Are you included in that crazy? Yeah, I'm fucking nuts. All right, all right. Just check it. You getting married? I'm not getting married. When did I say getting married? That's what these guys are saying. You told someone. Get the fuck out of here. When's the big date? This is awesome news. What's yeah. going Bullshit. on? Don't put fuck... You know, Doug, you're a fucking <laughs> asshole. Get the fuck out of here. Don't put words in that goddamn idiot's mouth because he'll make a whole story out of it. We're Who's going about? to Ronnie's wedding? <laughs> Gary, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome. Thanks. Very cool. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Nice. An ass first thing in the morning. Hey, <laughs> that's what you need. Everybody needs to wake up to that. Exactly what you wanted to see on I, your Stern Show I, debut. Exactly what I knew I would see and wanted to see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right this way. Right this way. Cool. Wow. Fuck. So what's going on with you? You have a new book out? I do. I have a new book out, and it's called Hell High Note. Wow, I'm really low in here. Hold on. Yeah, Howard gets you right in the bed. Yeah, I just, I know, I just realized I was just in Howard's bed, I think. Um, yeah, I have a new book out, and I'm promoting it, and a new TV show coming out, Bottom Pit. Blah, 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 right? Right. But more importantly, you're going to be meeting Howard for the first time on the air. I am going to be meeting Howard. How are you feeling about that? I feel good. Contract player. Excited. I am excited. A little bit nervous at all? Seven years of your wow. life. I'm really nervous because I think he's. I think he's really them. funny. Only. And that must have driven I am. Um, when you would get offered roles, I'm kind of good at. I'm a good sport. It's kind of a. It's kind of a beautiful thing too because you're guaranteed. I'm also work. from New York, so exactly. I think we're gonna get along. You're interesting. You've worked with a bunch of very talented people. You're very talented yourself. No. You've been on American Idol. No, I'm not. Yeah, You have a good. It's a good conversation to be had. I do. I think you know. It's gonna be. I don't know if he's spoken to people that have been on Idol. I don't, I don't know if people have right. Randy or any of these guys. Uh, a while back, a long time ago, but lots changed since they've come in. I think that was like five or six years ago. So. Yeah, I mean, it'll be. I'm interested to see what he what he asked me. I'm sure it's going to be funny and tough at times, but I'm up for the challenge. Didn't I see him coming in? Is that you? That's me. It's good. I don't like it. All right, then let's take it down. Take it home. Let's take it down. <laughs> Forget this. I'm not going to look at this anymore. We're over that. Come here, we're going to put your head here. My head there? Yeah, just put your head right there. Good. Just stand here for the next 10 years. That's nice. That's much better. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Let's see now. Let's really see if you look like this. Oh, he's way hotter. No. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but he, no, he's better. He's, be he's better looking. That one I actually like. That's a good one, right there. Okay. I like that. All right, let's put this back. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty positive. You don't want to take it home? Um, I don't know. Will you sign it for me? Sure. Where will I put it, though? I don't know. That's it up to you. Ronnie working his yeah. charm on you already? Yeah, he, he's giving me this. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I mean, you don't mind if I take I don't, this home, right? I actually would like you to take All it. All right, I, I got to leave you, though, because you're going to but I'm going to take this home with me. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. There goes my picture. No worries. I got, there's, what's, what about this one? Why don't I take this one? That's Jeff the Drunk. You can have him as well. Oh, I'm going to take him, too. Good. Do All I right, thanks, guys. Name? See you later. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that the value is what? I don't know. That'd be at least six figures. Probably. Yeah. A couple mil. The detail um, and the And also, is I'm going to go home and actually do my own kind of thing on it. Your own interpretation. Yeah, well, after I've spent some time with him, I'm going to figure out what color would go best, like, right across his mouth. And <laughs> maybe put a little thing like a handkerchief there, because that may look, make him look a little slobber. Yeah. I'm wondering if I should also give him a gold tooth. That would look good. I think that'd be hot. Yeah. Actually, let's work on that now. 
<laughs> Don't you think I should? Yeah, to face it a little bit. Do you, you think know? I should do that? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't mind, would you? No, God. We have enough Ronnie around here. We don't need... Ronnie! Can I give you a black tooth? For sure, for sure. Ronnie? No, you don't want to ruin my picture. Oh, Ronnie. Go ahead. You, no, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. I'm a big fan of you, so you can do whatever you want. Ronnie. I thought you were great on Idols. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh, Ronnie. Honey, I'm really liking you now. See? I know how to work it. You do. I bet you everybody knows how to work it here, so that's... Not really. Really? Not really. I have the charm. Oh, does this guy have a zit on his nose? Yeah. And he has one on his ass, too. Oh, I don't want to know how so you know Just so you that. know. I don't want to know how you know that. Well, that's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My wife just stopped by. I know. Very, uh, hey, you know, I'm glad you stopped by, because I'm, I'm going to get Cara de Guardia, Guardia is, here. is here, too. Dio Guardi. Cara yeah. de Guardia is here, and I want to talk to her. But as long as my wife is here. I what? smuggled a dog in. The dog, you, believe it? the dog you brought into this building from North Shore Animal League is the cutest dog so I've ever, cute. officially the cutest dog I've ever seen in oh my, my life. Goodness. What is that dog? This is Duncan. He's 10 weeks old. He's a Basset Hound mix. He's from one of our Southern Rescues. Uh. I just want to, I know you have Cara. I just want to say North Shore Animal League America in Port Washington, we have our huge adopt a event this weekend. Over 700 dogs and wow. we'll be at the North Shore Animal League this, this weekend on Saturday. This dog isn't adopted, the one you're holding? No. I wish I had a TV show right now. Oh. If you saw this dog, you would adopt. So cute. Him. What's yeah. his name? This is Duncan. Well, he can be whoever right. he wanted to be, but we 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 named him Duncan. What kind of dog is he? A basset hound mix. Oh Mudigree. my god! You know we like to call them mudigrees. What a breeze. beautiful Listen, dog! And he's so good. Are you kidding Look me? Look at him. It's like a baby. They didn't even know that it was a dog. He they thought it was a stuffed animal sticking out of my bag. <laughs> In the building here because they don't let dogs yeah. up. How yeah. how old is he? Ten weeks. Ten weeks. Oh, Neutered. Completely ready to go. He'll be available this Saturday. Oh, I yeah. love him. Yeah. You see, I don't know how you uh, volunteer there because I see these dogs and they don't have homes. Uh, this dog breaks my heart. Well, the yeah. beauty of North Shore Animal League mm -hmm. is um, that every time I go, it's a new crop of dogs. So I know that these animals are being adopted. People come from all over. The only thing that breaks my heart are the adult dogs that are that are still there. And I just I say, know. when you're there looking at these cute puppies, go to the adult dog area because they're already trained. <laughs> what is your name? Your name? Beth Stern. It is? Yeah, I just got interviewed by Lisa G about that. Oh, okay. Because I said to Robin this morning, I don't know your name. Because <laughs> I said, what is he going to do if he has the day? I, I, really like I read it. a press I, release. I'm not a press release. I read a news article yesterday that said you have a new TV show. Yeah, I don't know why they're press releasing right now. It's it's a, it's a pilot, but apparently TV Guide Network is really excited about right. it. And it's I'm called thrilled. Gossip Cop. Yeah, it's a website now, gossipcop.com, where they um, debunk celebrity rumors. Oh. So I think it's a really great message, and people can go to the site now, but, but now it's going to be a TV show. But they say your name is Beth Estrada. Roski Stern. And then even last night when you were reading it to me, I said, I, I've given up trying to figure out if you're Beth Stern or Beth Ostrowski Stern. What would Stern you like me to be? Me? I yeah. mean, if my vote is Beth Stern. Okay. Did you, cause we, I played a clip this morning of some guy mangling your name, <laughs> and it's like, the, the guy. what did he call Beth Ostrowski? Yeah. Is it really hard, Ostrowski? Yeah, it's a hard it name. Um, why, don't I, why don't I legally change it? And then the... I thought you did. No. Oh, you didn't? No. So legally What's on your driver's yeah. license? About the Strasky. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, why don't I legally change it, and then there will be no more questions. Yeah, but, but you've got to say to people, I'm, I want to be introduced as Beth Stern. Absolutely. I will announce it now. Please introduce <laughs> yeah, me. I'm going I, on Fox and, or I was on Fox and Friends just now. Now I'm going on Good Day New York. I will tell them to introduce me as Beth Stern. Thank you. And Alex this afternoon. Yeah, I just want to know Stern. what your name, because people say, well, what is your name? I go, I don't know. Because I don't know my wife's name. Well. <laughs> now I do. Anyway, everybody come to North Shore Animal League this weekend. All right. Um, and I love have you. Fun I love that Cara dog. And that is a beautiful dog. Duncan. All right. All right. I and love honey, you. wear a name tag because I don't know your name. <laughs> I love you too. See you at home. And I'll see you later. And she is one of the hottest Jewish women in the world, by the way. I don't know if really? you know that. When did you become that? <laughs> there was an article that says she's on a list. Aren't you on a list that says you're the hottest Jewish woman? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, take a picture of that dog and put it on Twitter. That is a great that, dog. If you see this dog, you will adopt this dog. Wow, what a dog. And feels good, too. I just gave her yeah. a little, uh, him a little pet. Right? Such a soft coat. I'm tempted to take that dog. <laughs> I like That him. is a beautiful a dog. dog. You yeah. could not go wrong. We got a house full of pets, though. No, you don't. You got two cats and a dog. That's a house full of pets. <laughs> that is not. Cara... De Guardi. Dio Guardi. Dio Guardi was on American Idol for two seasons. Yes. And I don't know what happened after that. 
to me. Let me look at you. <laughs> Carl, let me look at you. Put down the picture of Ronnie. No, let me look you over. Let me look you over, baby. Kara is dead. There is no Kara anymore. Kara? Kara. Is it Kara? It's that Cara. guy called me Kara. Kara. You're oh, so Simon. annoying, Kara. Oh, that's It's Kara, it. man. Can I get my name back, please? You got a great body. When you took your you. Um, clothes off on American Idol and you went into the bikini, and I know in your new book there's a whole chapter on it, uh, because it was traumatic for you, right? But I, I got the impression at the time that you really wanted people to see how hot you were and how hot your body was, right? <laughs> no, what it was was they um, they had this great idea and they were like, "All right, you remember Bikini Girl? We're gonna have her back on this, on the you know finale, and um, you're gonna be in a bikini and come out, or you're gonna be in a dress and come out singing, and then you'll show everyone." I loved it. I changed and my whole opinion. It was you. a great idea, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's awesome!" And then I was like, well, "Wait a minute, who's doing that?" And they're like, "You." I'm like. No, whoa. I don't even want to go to the freaking beach in my right. bathing suit. Okay? Is that true? I mean, here you are, the woman who wrote songs for years. You never got to be the person in the front. You never got to be the, the front person, so right. to speak. You'd write these songs for other people. They'd have huge hits. Suddenly, on American Idol, they want you in a bikini. You're going to be on the stage. Everyone share. I would think this is your dream. Really? I wet myself. Okay. What do you mean you wet I yourself? I was so nervous. My manager was like, "Honey, do not wear a white bathing suit. You better wear a black one." Because he knew that I was, I had, I was so incredibly nervous. And you peed in your bikini? Yes, a little tinkle. <laughs> Is that I true? Did. Yes, I, I swear to God. It's so sexy. I could kill I myself. Oh, really? You like oh, that? Oh my God, that drives oh me nuts. God. Are you serious? Like you couldn't even control your urine. That you well, peed all over your bikini. Was, was well, the bikini it, wet? Listen, when, it wasn't like a puddle. It wasn't like you know. Was, I was the bikini swimming. wet? When a you little bit, but what was worse is I had this dress on by from Vera Wang, uh -huh. and the poor woman, she was like, "Okay, I need it back the day after." Right. And all I Just could think of is, yeah, yeah, all I could think of is, is she's going to get it, and there'll be a magnifying glass like CSI, <laughs> and they're going to look down it, and she's going to be like, "Oh my God, this pig!" <laughs> tell me, you, tell anything. me, you defecated in your bikini, and I'll marry you right no, now. No, I didn't. I didn't. You did that not. one. I didn't. That no. would be so hot if you completely lost every. Like every that would. Um, well, release. that would have been really interesting for Bikini Girl. <laughs> American Idol, the worst experience in the sense that, okay, you got to be famous, but you took a beating. I mean, you came in, and all of a sudden you're being scrutinized, mm -hmm. and everyone's calling your name. I was doing it, too. I mean, yeah. you were, you know, everyone's like, get her off of there. They yeah. don't need a fourth judge. No, I, I totally. It was like I, it, I broke up the Beatles, you know? And right. I think what was really frustrating for me is that I... I could never voice who I really was, and they didn't set it up so well. So people are like, "They who didn't the, introduce who you." Who the hell properly. is this girl? She's got like some right. teased hair. She looks like Paula's cousin. She's sitting there, and part of it was I was so incredible. You know, I sat on the couch in the back of the studio. No, I, I got coffee for some of the artists at times. They'd walk in and go, "Honey, I need it black with uh, milk." Right. So the you know, so I was the weird, so behind the so scenes. The weird yeah. in a way. They could have orchestrated you coming on American Idol in a better way to make people like you and understand the need for you. Because if you really analyze it, more than Simon, more than Paula, more than Randy, you've actually written... How many hit songs have you written? When I say hit songs that have been on the top of the charts... A, a lot. Like uh, 40, 50... I've sold, 40, probably, I've sold songs of mine. I've sold over 159 million records. Wow. 159 million records. Songs. That so I had. if they had made that clear, like I didn't know anything about you. All of a sudden, I thought you were Paula's friend or something, or they were <laughs> using you to keep Paula in line, mm -hmm. which is the worst thing. That's almost to bring someone in and say, hey, yeah. she's here to get Paula in line. Look, it was not easy, I got to tell you. And I, I think the hardest part was when I did sometimes read the blogs. Um, and they were they were pretty hard on me, but also at the same time when I'd watch the show I'd be like she is annoying that person because that person right. wasn't me where you would talk too much And then Simon would say oh stop talking oh, Carl. Well, I was nervous and I was Trying to figure out how to fit in and it was impossible because they had this chemistry already. Is it hard to be a judge in the sense that sometimes you really think someone sucks and you just don't want to say it to them You don't want to hurt their feelings. Well by the end I, I you know it was funny the last season 
it was probably really annoying for Simon because I would tee him up. I'd be like, that wasn't so good, I got to tell you. I mean, I right. was always negative. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of his role. So right. to tee him up was weird. But for me... Would he say to you after the show, you fucked me over because no, you, you, no, you were negative and now all of a sudden when I'm negative, it seems like the mm, same thing. No, he wouldn't because, you know, he knew that I wasn't... I think if he knew I was trying to fuck with him he probably yeah. would have said that he would have been like who the fuck do you think you are is he was he the boss so to speak was he the one I in was, charge i would say that he really um ran the panel when he was there and how did he get that role i mean didn't randy get resentful of that randy plays it smart he just kind of no, lays back I mean, and Randy's happy to be a great there. guy randy is you know randy's like a teddy bear he's just a doll he's you gonna go along with he whatever's is. Happening. you don't great. like simon do you i do like simon you i do. do in the beginning i thought he was way too hard on me and how so well when we you know we'd be on the audition table and he'd be like car you're talking car you know and it was i'm the kind of person that way if, too hard are you on camera or off camera well both. Kind of both, but okay. I understood it. Listen, I understood the guy was the star. I got it. It's not like I was like going in my room and, you know, calling my agent. It was like I got it. I was just trying to figure out how to adapt around him. He could have been help more helpful is what you're saying because he uh, he affects everyone's perception mm -hmm. of you. Totally. And if when he blows you off and he cuts you off and rolls his eyes while you're talking, you're doomed. But that's you know it. what? That's TV, so I got it. Like, that's who he is. That's his role. But by the second, by the ninth season... We started to, you know, I think develop a respect for each other. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I learned a lot from that guy. I learned a lot by watching him. So for that, I have to give him thanks. Explain to me as a songwriter how you make a living. Because I, I don't understand it. You write the song and then after you write the song and someone like uh, Christina Aguilera sings your song. Yeah. You get checks on a regular basis. You get, you get, I mean, if you write big, big songs, we're talking millions of dollars. Wow. So I, I was. You, you've I written to, big, big songs. Yeah. And, I, and you have millions of dollars from yeah. it. And it's constant. In other words, I have friends who are in the music business and they say, oh, the royalty checks just keep, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. taking two years off because the royalty checks come in. It, it, it's that big an amount. And how do you even know they're paying you the proper amount? How do you audit that? Well. First of all, I, I'm one of probably the only songwriters that owned their own catalog forever, since the beginning. You own all your own music. I did, but I sold everything about three, before I went on Idol. Mm -hmm. So I was, when I was, when I was approached with, by Idol, I was almost like, I think I'm out of here. Yeah, I think you I'm were done now. Like I'm just gonna chill for a while. Such I had, a I had, millionaire. Such in other words, you had enough. Mo you have enough money that you could have said, I, "I'm done songwriting. I'm done working. I'm, uh, this is it. I, I can play the rest the of my beat. life." Oh yeah, I mean, I I made more from songs than I did from Idol. Of course. Yeah. I mean, from what you're saying, you're one of the most successful songwriters in the world, aren't you? I I think I would. People would say I was one of the. Can you give most us some successful. titles? We, yeah. yeah um, uh, well, here, wait. I'll get. Oh, here. Let me let me do this. I'll I'll, yeah, I'll give I'll you get, some what titles. Are you doing? Here, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll give you some titles, and then I want. I, I'm fascinated by this. I, I really I, am. How do you know they're paying you the proper amount of money when you're? Well, you check it, and you know. I mean, I. When you I'm, check it, who do you, you check, check it with? I go to B, I go to BMI. I go to the you know, performance rights societies, the record labels. I also. Um, How could you really know that you're being paid properly? You really can't. Well, you audit them too. You do. Of course. And you've done You want to know this? I am the only person in the history of the music business that audited a company and they had overpaid me. Who wow. was the company? I had to pay back the money. <laughs> Who oh, was no. the company? EMI. EMI. In other words, they'd sent you royalty checks. Yes. You, did, you checked. I, I had to send back money. Why did you tell them uh, the truth? Could you have lied? And what just... do you mean? I, I, they found, because when they go through the books that you right. have to disclose. Yeah. Oh Can you imagine? God. Have you ever audited and found that you were owed money? No, not yet, because you know why? I register my songs. See, a lot of writers like to go, oh, I didn't get paid, I didn't get paid. Did you register your song? What does that mean? Exa they go, you have to put it in with the company. If you don't, they don't know to pay you. Ah. I see. You've got to keep an eye on your yes. songs are your children, and you well, have to keep exactly. an eye on Exactly, and I'm, I'm a business person. I own a publishing company. I, you know, I Does publish. it kill you inside that you don't get to sing your own songs? It would drive me insane. I mean, I always felt bad for the guy in the band, uh, Robbie Robertson, who wrote all those songs, but he couldn't sing them. At least he got to be on stage and play the guitar. Right. Uh, is that the worst part? Of this it, whole experience in your profession? I mean, I wanted to be an artist in the beginning, but that didn't work out. So you hate it, singing, don't you? I hate performing. Because your father ruined it for you. Well, I don't want to say he ruined it, but he pushed me as a little kid. And I, I kind of, you know, I talk about it in the book. I had stage fright. I definitely your had stage fright. Your dad would say, Cara, Cara, get up there on the stage and sing. Yeah. And that freaked you out. 
it totally freaked me out because I was a perfectionist mm -hmm. and I was more about like, am I going to get it right? Is it going to be great? As opposed to loving it and being in the moment. And but I have to say, I thank my dad for that because it got me ready for American Idol. That you thank you, you make that good that your father would force you up on a stage to sing. Well, when you're in front of 25 million people live, it, thank God I had that kind of experience. Did you ever go out and perform ready. some of your own songs? Will you ever sing your own songs? Um, well, that's sort of how I got to writing the book. Is I was doing these shows where I was singing the songs I co-written and telling the stories of. Is how that what you did? Be. Because of American Idol, you probably said, "Hey, I could go out and do a little show, and people will come here." Like Burt Bacharach. Well, used my to do manager that. forced me to do it again. Burt Bacharach mm -hmm. couldn't sing his own songs, but he became such a known personality as a songwriter that he right. could go out and people would say, okay, I'll maybe go see him. he can't mm -hmm. sing it so great, but that's it. Are you a good singer? Ask me to sing one of my songs. All right. What, what's your biggest song that you ever wrote? What's, uh, your, what's your favorite? Well, I love Sober. Sober. That's the one uh, Pink did, right? Yeah. So when she's on the radio singing that, and you obviously can sing. Do you ever say, why didn't I just record that song? No, I say, thank God for that bitch. I love her. Really? <laughs> you don't want the spotlight? No. Not like that. I love singing. I do, but... What do you mean you wrote that song? I mean, you wrote right, the I'll music? Give you, let me tell you, you what it was, right, okay? Tell, yeah, let, let me, me tell you that, this. Because this is important. You know, a hell of a high note gets into this. It says, you know, because there's been all this stuff in the press about all these things that I've been through. But why it discusses it is because every experience I've had and everything I've gone through has been put into my songs. So I had an eating disorder. Okay? Yeah, okay. So we go to write sober. You know, when you have an addiction... What, what do you mean you go to write sober? Is that the, I'm you, with, you mean you're call, with I get Pink. a call from Pink. You write together in exactly. a room. Exactly. So I get there. And to be honest with you, it was the second time we'd met. The first time was a bit awkward. I met her. She was at the end of, of this album, and her record label was like, you need to go out and find a hit. Meanwhile, she had all the hits. And they were like, go meet this girl, uh, Kara. And she's like, S who's this bitch? Kara. Right. You know? <laughs> i got to go meet someone now. I'm a big artist. So I met her, and it was a little awkward. And I thought, oh, I blew that. That's never going to happen. But she called a year later, and I went out to Malibu. Isn't it funny you think you blew it? She blew it. She needs you. She, the, she needs I don't know the if she songwriter. Needs me. She's pretty damn good, I gotta tell you. She's I, I think she's a very talented woman, so and I like really, her music. She's writing a lot of her Wait, songs. Wait, right? she really does, so yeah. I'm gonna tell you what and happened. And I love that song, Sober. Well, so, so what happens is I go out there, and I'm like, you know, let's talk about what happened last time, because as women, you know, you, you never want to be in a room with a woman and there's some weird shit going on. So we right. cleared the air on that, and then we opened the bottle of wine. Right. And I am not a big drinker. Like one or two, and my cl I'm up on the bar, man. Me too. I'm ready to go. Right. This girl, she can drink a lot more than me. So I try to keep up. But what happened is we just had this great game of, like, drunken tennis, you know? You mean you would spew out a line... And then Pink would spew out exactly. a Exactly, and that's how we would do it. She wow. had the last line, how do I feel this good sober, and they had the track. How so did I you know to, figure... to call it, so did she come over and say, we're going to write a song called Sober? She said, I have a title, how do I feel this good sober? And we wrote backwards from that. And you were drunk when you wrote it. Totally drunk. That's, <laughs> that's, that's insane, right? It was so fun, and I was so drunk that when I went to get in my car on the Pacific high, uh, Highway, Coast Highway, I had to pull over. I think I had to nap for 45 minutes. Do you remember which lines you wrote in the song? I remember um, the pre-chorus I, I definitely influenced because the, it was a four-bar loop. I don't know if you... About we don't his, know anything. Right, okay. We're, we're so, idiots. Yeah, so right. from the you're definitely right. not an idiot, right. but... Um, <laughs> um, uh, that is colon, all that stuff in the pre, and a lot of the melodies, and we did it well, who together. Who writes the melody? You guys write we it both together. Do. I mean, you know, to get down to who did what, I'm telling you, that girl is one of the most talented people I have ever been around. That it is was insane. the best writing session of my life, and I've I'm Never. My mother's soul, the girl, went into the recording booth and sang it three times, and it was done. I've never heard a better explanation about how someone writes a song. I've never really gotten... It's chemistry. It's a date. It's a date. Mm -hmm. And then she goes in and nails it. Nailed it like you've never seen. We all had goosebumps. Do you go to an office every day? Not every day, but I go there. You're, the, you're, you're a record executive at Warner Brothers. Yeah. You have a, a title. What is your title? Uh, it's, you know, like A&R. Right. You go out and discover people. That's got to be a trip because you can, right. you can literally take the hand of God and make it. Forget American Idol. Yeah. You could take the hand of God, go see a kid in a club and make him you know one what? of your I'm artists. I'm trying to change what's been going on in music because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. We got to have the right gatekeepers because, you know, people ask, why, don't, why, aren't, why isn't there a Beatles or a this or a that? Right. Well, artists are sensitive and 
if they're in the wrong hands, they'll end up in bed for four years. Mm. You know, so imagine right. that somebody walks in who's really got the goods and they're mishandled or they're not talked to. You know, creative people speak a certain language. Business You're absolutely people and creative right. don't. So you know it's, what? They respect me more than they would like some, you know, guy who, who really has never... You're absolutely right. Or? You've written songs. You understand artists because what you say is not bullshit. I have friends who are in the recording industry. They can't get out of bed in the morning. They get into such depressions. They they feel so yeah. much. That's how come they can write songs. That's, they feel this intensity, don't they? They do, and that's you know that's partially what this book is about. It's you know you cannot write great songs unless you come from a place of truth. And when you talk about Pink, the reason she's so great is she comes from her truth, she's not ashamed of it, and she f lets it out there, and th she's inspired so many people, especially women. So you sat in the studio with her, she does this song, and you can smell a hit, can't you? I, I was, whether it was a hit or not, it was a life-changing experience for me. It went, in my brain I went, why would I ever go in the studio with someone who didn't inspire me. Now, after that magic happens, why does she say, to you, let's go sit and write 10 more songs? Why is it just the one? Well, you know, she wrote a lot with uh, Max Martin, these new songs, and he's one of the best songwriters ever. You see what's coming across right now? Here you are, a woman who's incredibly knowledgeable about the music industry and have been responsible for millions and millions of records, and yet that never came across on American Idol. And in a way, that's the program's fault. You yeah, couldn't have set that up. we didn't know who we were listening to. In fact, you seem to be more important to me now because you do have this credibility. Mm -hmm. well, thank What's you. the most difficult song you ever wrote? I'll give you a couple uh, of... Ain't No Other Man. Ain't No Other Man. I'll tell you why. Uh, why is that? Who did that, Ain't No Other Christina Man? Christina Aguilera. Aguilera, yeah. I wish I had that to play right um, now. Yeah. I'm sure I'll you tell you why it was it. difficult. Yeah. Why? She... Okay. Let me see if I can clearly state this. You know when you go into karaoke bars? Yes. You know the track, the music they put on? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, a lot of times today... Producers will give you a track. It's already done. The music is sounding great. It's ready to go. Okay? You have to write the top line, which means the melody and the lyric. Right. She had this track from a guy named DJ Premier, and it was going, do your thing, honey. Do your thing, honey. And I was like, oh, my God, shut that bit. I'm going to kill myself <laughs> if I hear that one more time. Right. And Christina's going, this is my single. And I'm like, girl, you are out of your mind that is not your single that is like the worst thing i've ever heard she's uh -huh. like i'm telling you this is the single she knew and i'm like how is this the single who is this annoying person who keeps saying do your thing and she said i'm just telling you it is and i had to get out of my own head and this is really interesting actually she was in a great marriage and she was feeling really positive and really loved and i was in a shit relationship uh -huh. um and i was blocking the words for Ain't No Other Man, the feeling, the intention, because, because it you was were, healthy. Right. It was happy and it was healthy. And you weren't in that place. And I have been in that place, but in that particular moment, I wasn't. So. You married now? Yeah, to a great guy. Who is this guy? His name's Mike. Probably doesn't even work. He probably has you uh, He did work. He was a um, teacher. Look at, this. Look at this fucking guy. He was a teacher. <laughs> and He's a good let me guy. tell you, let me tell you, he totally works. He's operations. Operations? What is that? Well, Operations. in the house, we don't have any help. We don't have anything. Oh, so I, he's a, he, he's... So I, I, I go, Operations, I need you in the bathroom and down the income. And he comes upstairs. <laughs> is it hard to respect a man who isn't powerful, who like you, who Dude, doesn't that guy have... is so powerful. Are you kidding? He but can... you know what I mean. A, a no. man is defined Outside, by his job. Absolutely, you absolutely not. And you don't get resentful you. that he stays home and doesn't have what? to earn the money? I think he, d he deserves a medal for dealing with me and my life. Seriously. Really? And doesn't he feel inadequate in some way? Because he you, is so supportive. He's so happy that I'm Do you give him cash everything. every week? He works. Oh, he does work. Well, he works on our... We have a bunch of properties, so he's... Like, he just finished three bathrooms. He was away for a month doing them. He works hard. He digs ditches for the house. He's... But you have to pay him. He's doing a job. I gotta pay somebody. How do you pay your husband? What do you decide to pay oh, him? Oh, God, I can imagine how you think I pay him. <laughs> no, do you um, pay him well? I pay him what, he, what normal people In other words, he pay. needs $5,000 to go buy himself a, a leather bag. Does he have what? to come to First you and say... First of all, he ain't buying a leather bag. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. Bag? You know, a, 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 a piece of luggage. <laughs> he, has, he owns properties, too. He has his own money. He has his own money? Yes, he does. All right, take it easy. <laughs> oh, my God. I, like I mean, that. come on, man. You're getting defensive. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> Uh, I'm not defensive. attacking. I'm asking. Does he have access <laughs> to your money? Is there a joint account? No. There is not. Of course not. No joint account. How long have you been married? Two years. You got kids? No, I'm trying. 
Can and no one today can Can't. have kids. I know. I've been having a lot of sex. No kids. Oh, a lot well, of sex. That's good and bad. B- bunch of IVFs too. Oh, You've really? Ha- don't do that. What am I supposed to do? So don't have a kid. Well, I'm t- I may I may adopt. Yeah. yeah. Get a uh, yeah. kid from a lousy. Me. <laughs> a I think I'm going to adopt Ronnie. Where no, did he go? Ronnie uh, and Ronnie left. He's looking to be adopted. <laughs> he is. Oh, you did all the in vitro. You want that baby? I but tried. Yeah, but it's hard. It's really hard. Online. What do you think it is? Maybe you exercise too much. No, I don't exercise too much. I think, honestly, trying to get pregnant when you're on a live TV show is impossible. So maybe you need to Stress. chill a little bit. Yeah. I did. I chilled. I gained some weight, you know, went through the process of it again. And um, and the in vitro is a very work. painful experience, isn't it? It's, you know, you got to give yourself shots. In your exactly asshole. Now. Not what? in my asshole. How could you shoot into an asshole? You can't it's a hole. That. Into yeah. your vagina? Into, oh, what? Stop it. Where you're do you shoot this stuff? A hip into or your stuff. Oh my stomach. God! What the stomach? Into your stomach. Yeah, right here. I just do Let me it right see. here. Show me your stomach. No, I can't do that. <laughs> lift right up now. your dress. And no, show I'm not going to lift up my dress. <laughs> you know you no. want to. Oh God! Did it drive you crazy walking around uh, Los Angeles all these years, being this incredible songwriter, selling millions of records, and nobody knew your face? Nobody knew who you were. No, you know, God. I think what was most important to me, honestly, was being financially independent. Yeah. I see. It was about being able to work and make money and, and be being, successful. Being able to stay in music, which was what got me healthy, like writing and, and dealing with my issues. Being able to do that as a living and stay in it and and actually make money from it was my primary goal. Then Who has complete take American Idol and then step up? How, because the pro- how do you say no to America? It's like, it was, do you want to go on American Idol and be a judge? Uh, no. Who like, approached you, know, you on that? Uh, the producers did. They knew of you. They knew of your they reputation. Knew of me. They knew of me. And it's funny because you never saw that side of me on the... Uh, on, I, they knew of me. They reduced f- you to a joke. Simon took you and really kind of made you like, uh, you're not that important. Meanwhile, you're doing way more in the music business than he is. I don't know that he reduced me to a joke. I think what he, what was happening is where was my role? I didn't have a role. And yeah. you know what? Also- and an industry executive, by the way, because that was my role. Uh-huh. Who the hell wants to watch that? That's boring. I, don't I need think so. experts. Not a songwriter. We, you know, we sort of heard that, but nobody ever really knew your credentials. What artist has completely ruined your music? You wrote a song. You knew it was a hit. They took it and wrecked it. I can't say anyone's ever wrecked a song. Who blew it? What song do you think you wrote that should have been a hit and wasn't because so and so recorded it? I got to think about that. Well, you know what? I'll say one thing. There was a song, and it's not because of the artist. Mm-hmm. It was because sometimes what happens is the people running these labels picked the wrong, not all of them, because I actually love Warner Brothers. I think right. it's a great label. But sometimes they'll pick the wrong song for an artist in the uh-huh. wrong genre. And I'll give you an example. There was an, a song I wrote called Lost by Faith Hill. It was a great singer. Right. But it was too pop, the song. It's not going to fit in country. She, didn't, she shouldn't have been the one to sing it. Right. So it wasn't her fault. It was just that it didn't live there. It didn't survive there. It, it didn't fit the market. Mm. She's a country artist. She can't be doing songs that kind of feel more pop. You're a very good looking woman. You know that, right? Thank you, Howard. I appreciate You're that. very attractive. When you were a kid, when you were growing up, when you were in high school, you, were, you probably had everything going for you. You could write music, you could sing, and you're I, I wasn't hot. doing that then. Yeah, but you would probably had an easy time in high school. You weren't unpopular, were you? No, I, you know, I had some, I had a lot of friends, good friends, and I, I uh, boyfriend. I had a boyfriend in high school. Yes. Started sexually uh, early. I had sex at fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, hold Slut. on. What, go hold ahead. up. <laughs> Let me tell you the rest. Yes. So I kind of did it for him because he was more sexually advanced than I was, and then I didn't do it again until I was nineteen, and I went to confession, <laughs> and You're I had to do girl. like a thousand Hail Marys and Our Fathers, and oh my father my was looking at me like, what the hell have you done? What is, you know, because that's how your parents would tell. You yeah. reveal in your new book, and by the way, I should plug the book, it's a hell of a high note, it's in stores now, you reveal in the book that you were raped by a record producer. Now, after an experience like that, which uh, when I read the notes, I, I got really sad for you. I mean, again, it sounds like um, Kim Cattrall saying, like, you go in, mm-hmm. you were probably what, a uh, young kid. Mm-hmm. How old? Like um, maybe 28, 29. 28, mm-hmm. 29. You're a good looking woman. You walk in there and all you're trying to do is sell songs. Mm-hmm. You're trying to make a living. Some fucker. Uh, I don't know who the guy is. I don't know if you name him. No, I don't. No. Why is that that you name him? Because if you make it about one person, then it's about that person. And it's not an experience that all the other people that have gone through this. Yeah, but why don't to. we out these people? I don't understand was that. Was this person I was talking... ever punished? 
Um, I'll tell you, I walked straight up to him in a club the, the two days later. Well, f- the day after I stayed in bed because mm-hmm. I was sure. just like freaked out. The day after that, I went out with um, a producer I was working out with at the time, this guy, Steve Morales. And um, it just so happened that the guy was in the club. Mm-hmm. And I walked straight up to him and said, I know what you did to me. And he looked at me and laughed and said, you wanted it, honey. Oh. Mm. And the producer, hold on, this was, because this was really important, because my, you know, I had been through this thing as a kid with my mom, and she didn't kind of stand up, you know, and... and you had been, and you were referring to, I'll, I'll take you through this, because this is def- diff- difficult. When you were a younger kid, you were molested mm-hmm. by a family friend. Mm-hmm. And you were how old? Around 11. 11 yeah. years old. Mm-hmm. And this guy got you alone. He, he touched you in inappropriate yeah. places. He, did, did he have uh, sex with you? No. No. He mm-hmm. didn't force you to give moral yeah. or anything like that, but no, he molested you. He touching, touched you and, yeah. and all of that. And so when you went to your mother looking for protection, mm-hmm. you said, Mom, this is happening to me, which most young girls don't. They're afraid. Because usually the molester says, I'm going to kill your parents if you tell, and this and that. But did he try any of that on you? No, no, no. So you went to your mother. You trusted her. Mm -hmm. And you opened up to her, which is difficult. She basically ignored it. It was, you know, when a parent, when you feel unprotected by a parent, I think what happens is in your brain it goes to, I'm not worth anything. That's right. So I had to kind of build my self-esteem. But in my mother's defense, she was... um, very Catholic, repressed. My, right. my parents never said sex until I was like in my mid-20s. Why, why does every person who isn't protected by their parents somehow build up the, in defense of my parents? Well, There's let me no tell defense. you, I, dis- I discussed it with my mother before she died. Okay. Um, you know, I, my mother was sick for seven years, so I had a long time to get And you this. took care of her. I did. And I, un- I, I forgave her. You know, it was the kind of thing that I know it weighed heavily on her because now that I've written this book, a yeah, lot but, but, of but friends Cameron, have what called. Was, and but what was her, about but what was her response when you said, "Mom, why didn't you do something?" She said, for I, me? "I wasn't strong enough, and I'm sorry." And that's what you don't understand, mm. Howard. These people are doing the best they can. No, I do yeah, understand they, that. And they don't she have really the was, wherewithal. She didn't to have. There was no Oprah back would then. Be right. yeah. There was no, no one I understand to tell. And that. this was her one but of her close friends. It was a bad situation. If you did have a child, or any child that you know came to you and told you this, how come you have the strength to stand okay, up for that you're person? You're talking to a girl who got, in, got sl- slapped two weeks ago by some girl on the street for interrupting when she was yelling and pushing her daughter. Good. Well, how That's come you right. have the strength and your mother couldn't find the strength? Let's not forgive her so easily. We're different people. Two different We're different times. Why do we have to forgive <laughs> because if you don't forgive and you don't let it go and get past it, it's just going to eat you alive. I've moved on from it. You're looking at a guy who's eaten alive. And let me tell you, <laughs> you something. I'm you still look standing. Pretty damn good. You Goddamn right. You look pretty damn good. Are you um, enjoying let, it? Let me. Let, uh, well, so, 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 getting back to this painful subject. So you had been through this, and and I don't understand what happened with this record guy. You, okay, you go so in, this is what happened. So I yeah. go up to him and I say this, mm-hmm. and he laughs at me. But the producer I'm with sees this the guy that I went to the and goes up to him and goes you fucking ever touch her again I'm gonna fuck it and so he stood up for me right and it was this amazing moment where I just felt like so protected by him how and did this guy rape you were you on a date with him yeah I was on oh, a, you date, on a with date so what happened was he had been acting like he was so interested in my music and that I was so talented and I was, you know, down in Miami and I didn't have any friends there or anything and I was working all the time and he seemed really nice. He had, you know, a daughter, I don't know what age, but he seemed like a, f- a good he was dude. divorced, but right. seemed like a good t- guy. Right. And, you know, uh, we we went on a date and then, you know. Where do you take you on the date? Dinner? Yeah, a restaurant. Drinking a lot? No. Okay. No, no. Um, and it just, at the end, you know, he came, we went back and I guess. Where, his room? No, he walked me to my my apartment because right. I had mm-hmm. rented an apart you know I had an apartment there, and um, we started you know kissing whatever. But I was like, no, y- date rape is a very strange thing, right? Because you don't realize it's happening to you because it's not a stranger; it's someone who you actually thought you knew. That's right. And so, you know, before I knew it, he's like. It was just you. He's you're kissing frozen. you, and then all of a sudden, and I'm like, no, no, and and, and and you said no, a million times, and he kept kind of pushing it. Yeah, and then um, 
And he pushes himself into you. Right. I, I'm not sure that he... Um, I don't think there was, pen, you know... Um, you don't think there was penetration? No, there was that, but not... He didn't... Come or yeah, something. Didn't well, come. You don't yeah. think he came because no, what? You threw him I off Then I was your... like... I, then I started, I think, to hear... You know, it got awkward. It got weird and you just said, no, no, no. Again, and, and, and then get finally, off of me. He, yeah, he was like... It, it, you know, it's, he was pushing a little bit too hard. Wow, and wasn't yeah. taking no for an answer. Mm. Yeah, it was really. The fuck is wrong with guys? Why, why does a guy get off on? Well, you know, I know it's not about getting off, dude. It's a power trip. But, but in but. his mind, he thought he literally thought I, that's what I wanted because I right. went up to him and I was like, I know what you did to me, and in that moment, for whatever it was, I got some power back. Mm-hmm. Would have been nice, even if he could have said to you, you know what, I got carried away. And, I would have understood that. Did that you would have responded to. If he said to me, you know what, I thought about it and I was, you're I was right. I that was a little was too aggressive yeah, or yeah. whatever. But no, he said you wanted it. Yeah, clearly you wanted way, it. And by the way, here's the thing. It's like I really was, all I cared about was doing my job and getting my songs on records. I was like a scrapper. I mean, that's what I cared about. Mm-hmm. I did not care about. So I never had sex with any guy I ever met the on guy, the first date. The guy who yelled at him for you. Did he try to have sex with you? No. Because I would. That would have been my uh, No, he didn't. I would have yelled at that guy. Go, so what about me? No, he sex. didn't. I calculate everything. <laughs> no, no, I go, no. I'm going to yell for her, and I'm probably going to get in her pants <laughs> oh tonight. Oh, my God. No, he totally How didn't. long did it take you to actually go on a date with a guy after something like that happens to you and actually trust a guy and get into bed with him? I think what happens um, is you get into the wrong relationships because it just reaffirms that I'm not worth any, you know, that, that thing that I was coming back from, you know, I had to, most of my career, I've been building back my self esteem, Mm -hmm. you know, coming back from where I was. And that's why I used all those things to write walk away, you know, because I did get into a bad relationship, but I finally got it right. I'm with a great guy now. And that's why this book I think is important. Doesn't date rape paint Every relationship you have with a man, aren't you sort of expecting that every man is an animal? I think what it does is it makes it very hard for a person to be intimate. To right. Truly, like it's one thing, you know, when you first meet someone you've been dating and then you start having sex, right? And it's like that new thing. But once it becomes like something you've been doing with them, it's the intimacy that keeps you. Together. I love that challenge. I wish I had met you right after that. Really? Because I love the challenge of <laughs> making someone feel trusting. That's the strangest thing you've ever heard. I've done it three or four times uh, in my life. Really? I, Absolutely. You know I'm I terrific at that. that. I'm a the cleanup guy batter. Date after date rape. I've, many women have come to me after date rape and said, you know, I, they, they, I'm talking with them. They tell I me about it, and I go, now you. here's a challenge for me. Oh my God, you're a sicko. I and love I, it. I never I, knew that about you. I nurse you. women back to health. You do? I wish I could have nursed you. I wish I'd known you. I wish I knew these women. I don't even know. I know. Oh God. The book is called A Hell of a High Note. It's in stores now. <laughs> Carol will be signing copies of her book at the Book Review in Huntington, New York. This is a very important appearance, and you will get to see her. You will sign everything, yes. and you will sit there and sign everybody's book, right? I, not only will I sit there and sign, I'll take pictures and photographs. And will you kiss them? Talk. I hug and kiss all You do. Not French. <laughs> no French kissing. No, just a, well, then you haven't gotten over your, your situation. No, you're right. You need God, what, to, what kind of a book signing would it be unless there was tongue? <laughs> Total orgy. I had yeah. anal with all of the people online at my Did book signing. Really? Absolutely. Oh my, that's you, why you're My ass was weird. so sore. I know. That's why. Uh, that's what's going on. May 7th at Does noon at Book Soup. Does she have people coming up and singing to her? Yeah. Because they, you know yeah. what's so cute? Now you're going to be on a new show, right? You're yeah, going to have a, a, where you're a judge. I had judge on a songwriting. But this makes sense because it's a songwriting competition and you're a songwriter. Yeah. So this should be good for it's you. It's really actually, it's a great show. Maybe you'll good. get to shine. And you like this better because it's tape, pre taped so that you feel it can be edited. and. Yeah, it, that's got its own issues because mm-hmm. I, you know, I have a lot to say, but uh-huh. it, they edit everything down. What the fuck is wrong with Paul Abdul? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> really, what is wrong? What, are you still friends? Or you got, like, did the I just saw it two weeks ago. American yeah. Idol experience ruin uh, your friendship I for think, a while? You know, I think it was tough for Paula to arrive on set one day and then for them to be like, oh, by the way, there's fourth judge. Like you were very cl- This is interesting in your book. Your book makes a lot of interesting revelations. When you were hired for American Idol, Paul Abdul was already working there. She was a good friend of yours. The type of friends that you guys go over our house and hang out and all this Not other stuff. Not for years, but we'd spent a really close amount of time writing together. Uh-huh. But you have to right. understand, friends like, you know, my friend from high school, whatever, that I still see. And then they're celebrity friends where, you know, you're friends for a minute and then they go off and they do their things. It's not the same. But thing. she was insulted. She showed up the day on the set. She should have And been you insulted. were there. And all of a sudden there was a new judge. Yes. And, 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 and really... She shouldn't have been any more insulted than the men, but she was because she was a woman. She, you were the new woman judge. 
Well, I'm sure Randy was sort of like, hey, what's going on here, dog? Why yeah. didn't they right. sit Why them didn't down they and tell, tell them? them? What were they afraid of? I, I really don't know. And she was angry with you because you didn't call her ahead of time and tell her. But as you say, hey, I wanted the job. I, I, I didn't want to lose my she job. Was, she never said to me, why didn't you call me? She uh -huh. was more like, what in the gut? What the hell is going on here? Like, there's some crazy. Sh I mean, it was literally like they were relighting the table. Where uh -huh. did you see her a few weeks ago? Um, at the awards, the uh, Logo Awards. Logo Awards. Mm -hmm. And she was friendly with you? Yeah. Totally. We said, hey, how you doing? You know. You're telling me they surprised Simon, too, with you as a judge, or they didn't tell him ahead of time? They told no, he him. Knew. He knew. In he the, gets yeah, to he know knew. the other two don't. Oh, no wonder they were going nuts. <laughs> uh, you, 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 Paula is probably devastated. Her show went off the air. She was a judge. She was going to do it on her own, and now, boom, over. I think she's going to be on X Factor. Simon has said oh. he wants her for X Factor. Oh, he does. He, uh, supposedly, the negotiations haven't started, but he definitely wants her. Do you oh, believe that Paula Abdul has never been on drugs? I think she said that she's been not on not on like drugs like pot or coke. Or, I think she said she's taken some pills for her back. Do you think she's loopy? I think that Paula is creative, and I think that you know <laughs> she's just that's her energy. Sometimes. You don't think it's ayahuasca or any of this <laughs> stuff? What's ayahuasca? You know full well what it is. I swear You've to God, you've never I been to Peru it. and had an what ayahuasca treatment. What? It is a leaf. It's, it's an ayahuasca. herb. An ayahuasca? That's right. I grew up. My parents said marijuana, so I don't know. Ayahuasca you know, is the new thing now. But it it does <laughs> say in my book it. how I got you know. You got stoned at Paul Abdul's <laughs> house, and she claimed the pot brownies you found in her refrigerator were, were put hers. there by someone else. <laughs> they Do you were. believe that for a minute? I believe that a hundred percent. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because the ma they were frozen there, right? Uh -huh. Nobody knew what the hell they were. The maid took them out to, to, to dethaw them. And then she ate one and ended up in the hospital. I ate six. <laughs> I couldn't even walk. For three days, I missed Father's Day. My father's like, what the hell? You got to be in the music business with a bunch of drug addicts. You're a wild chick, I bet. I bet you that, you know, you, you revealed a lot in your book, but I bet I, you've probably been with another girl. I've kissed a girl. Yeah. And I liked it. You've kissed a girl? You never got a full blown no, on no, lesbo I experience. A girl. Ever been in an orgy? No. Ever have two guys at the same time? Hell no. Nothing. What's no. the weirdest thing you ever did sexually? Anal. You said that. I didn't say that. You're not up for that? Oh, God. What was that? That's you clearing out. Oh, my God. I, it would be way louder than that. When you like, make love to a man, will you ever play with his buttocks? Oh, yeah. You will. You'll put a finger in there. <laughs> you will, won't you? How dare you? <laughs> you do? You have the most fun job, Robin. <laughs> I do. Literally, this is the gig right here. I used to think it was Kelly and Regis, but now no, I'm thinking this it's is, this, yeah, is this, is this, this is the gig. This is the gig. This is the gig. We're all gig. having a party. Can you make that sound again? <laughs> no, not with that. That one. That's actually me. <laughs> oh, my God. That's like music to my ears. <sighs> when you, sometimes do you ever say to yourself, I'm, you know, I imagine it was really difficult in the beginning to c get credibility as a songwriter. Like, well, you know, like someone's going to go, who's this person? Why, why would I sit there and, and write the, a song and, and with And also them? with a name like Diaguar, I mean, it's a nightmare. Cara Diaguar, like, oh, for How TV? did you get your credibility? Did you have to write a song on your own first, and then when you have a hit song first, and then the people will write with you? Not just one hit song. you got to have a few. How many songs did you have to write before you actually got credibility, where people would turn to you to help them It write? was the Enrique... Iglesias record that changed my Enrique life. Enrique Iglesias record. Oh, this cat, man. Forget it. Let what me did tell he do you. to you? You know what he did to me in the jingle ball down here? No. What? So the first year after I do is I, I write this scape, I, I said to him, uh, he said, oh, I'm doing the jingle ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jingle ball. The Madison Square Garden. Everybody there. I'm like, oh, my God. He's like, you come. I'm like, great. Yeah. And and I, we get there. He's like, you want us in the backgrounds? I'm like, the backgrounds, you mean on stage? <laughs> yeah, you send the backgrounds, you wrote the part, you could do it. I'm like, all right, great, but just cut the mic so no one hears me, you know, because I don't remember all the parts. So I get up, <laughs> I got a, a coat on, right, like a big bulky coat, yeah. sitting there singing. Oh, next thing I know, these two people next to me that were wearing a jacket rip the jacket off they're in skimpy little outfits and they start saucing and i'm sitting there frozen in like a wool coat not moving and i, I i'm like dying i turn around run off the stage and the the security guy goes ma'am 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 what's going on here and he quarantines me he thought i was a craze fan <laughs> enrique gets off stage and i'm like enrique man tell this guy what's up I never saw her in my life. Oh, oh wow. I've never seen her in my life. And they threw you out? He's, no, he finally oh. said. But this guy's crazy. We'd be in the limo, and he'd say, 
stop it, stop it, you're hurting me. And the limo guy would turn around and, and he'd go, she's hurting me, she's hurting me. And he'd get out of the car to get me and he'd jump in the front seat and drive away. You know when you just stood up to tell that story, we caught a panty shot? Really? We saw some panty. What? Show me. Show you panty here out of your wait mind, man. Oh, wait a second. Get out of your you don't mind. have enough money no, for that. No, show me on show me on camera. Let me see what happened. Oh They're yeah, like they caught something. Wait, they say they caught panty. Let me see. What are they talking what? about? What? Who don't said it. it? I don't know. If you guys caught panty, um, my checkbook. I'm writing a check because yeah, I need that good. panty shot. Well, all right. Let's. Uh, the new book is called <laughs> A Hell of a High Note. It's in stores now. A couple of quick phone calls, and then I'll let you out of here. Uh, let's go to Rick. Rick in Pittsburgh. Go ahead. Hey, thanks, Howard. Uh, Carol, why do I suspect that you like to be have your ass spanked during sex? Is that true? Why does he suspect that you like to be spanked? Are you oh, right? my God. Did my husband call you? Yeah. <laughs> Is that something you enjoy? A rough, you like rough, rough sex? sex? You like to be choked? You like to be spanked? Anything going on there? They're Choked just... and spanked. Yes. Um, Nothing wild with you. I mean, you know, sometimes my hair pulled, I guess. Yeah. Are you highly orgasmic? Mm, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Someone told me you like to be called anti-Semitic names while you're having what? sex. What? Is that true? <laughs> you're out of your freaking mind. All right. Yes. The panty shot is ready. All right, what? let me see. There, what let me see. panty shot? Are you... St- look, take a look at the camera. I mean, take a look at that monitor. Let's see. Whoa, I saw a little something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, 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 right there. Uh, uh, you guys yeah. have a camera right up my panties. Not up your panties. It's right over there. Listen, it happened. You guys are a bunch of sickos, man. <laughs> are you joking? Well, it's not bad. At it's least not there's bad. not cellulite hot. or anything. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, now I see it. You're wearing white underwear, and it's sexy. Thank God I wore underwear. You're a very sexy woman, I'll tell you. Oh, really? Thank That's you. That's right. You can write about this in your next book. That I said you were sexy. I was sexy? No, that you had a panty shot. Paul, go ahead. Uh, good morning. I wanted to see if you guys had watched the voice show last night. I watched a little of bit of it. I didn't, I see, didn't it. see it. No. Was it good, Robin? It was interesting. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Tony. Uh, Tony, go ahead. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Kara, I just want to say I Googled you as soon as you sh- appeared on the show, and I just thought uh, it... it uh, made for a much better experience. I really respected what you had to say. You mean when she was on American Idol? I really appreciate that. All right. I really appreciate that. I have one other thing I want to say quickly. Uh, Did you try cough medicine for uh, a replacement for IVF? No, I didn't. Cough medicine? You want to look into that. Doctors won't uh, tell you about it, but uh, it doesn't make for great radio, so I won't go on. You're telling me that she can have a baby if she drinks cough cough medicine. medicine? Absolutely. <laughs> I have a son. I have a son to prove it. Wow. And how do you learn about something like that? Was that just your discovery? A nurse. A nurse told us while we were going through IVF. Um, oh, our wow. daughter. Our daughter is IVF. Our son is natural. Now it's cough medicine. Cough medicine. Well, get on the cough. I knew a guy, a disc jockey. Not only that, let's in get Detroit. some stock in halls. I knew a disc jockey in Detroit who was addicted to cough medicine, and boy, was he a mess. Was he fertile? Uh, Thank you, though, very much for that. Uh, Dennis, go ahead. you're not going to do it, are you? You're not going to start drinking cough, cough medicine. medicine. Or are you going to look gonna, into it? Well, first of all, I'm going to drink it because maybe it'll help me get some sleep tonight. I'm are you book in a, tour is really? killing me. You're having a hard time with this book tour? No, it's just the being up, you know, not so much sleep, time but it's all right. Time changes and... Yeah, you, time were you ever a drug yeah. person? Never, no. Smoke weed? Except for the one time? Yeah. yeah, I mean, occasionally when I was younger. Not not, not now, no. You like a cocktail here and there? <laughs> Who the hell doesn't like a cocktail? Right, take it easy. <laughs> no, no, one's, no one's accusing of being an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got liposuction, huh? Yeah, I did. You don't need it. Did you really need it? Well, that was the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. I don't know. I was th- at in Paula's place, uh-huh. and I was, you know... St- ridiculous and looked in the LA Weekly and said, oh, you know, I never like my knees. I'm going to go do that. I mean, what a psycho. I don't even know. What I, I didn't even know who the doctor was. I could have died. Right. It was so stupid. Well, just for your knees. You sucked knees the fat and, out of your and, knees? And like right and your hips? here, yeah. Why? You had cellulite? No, I, I, I had the last, you know, I, I had eating issues and I have to tell you, once I spent $5,000... To do this, my binge eating was was never. What is binge eating? You? In other yeah. words, you starve yourself all day. You get home at night, and then you just like it was gorge. Like, it was, you know, there was a time in my life where I really didn't. I was trying to be something I wasn't. You know, I went to Duke. I was going to be a lawyer, and that right. was not who I was. I was creative. No, you're a so creative I, songwriter. Yeah, so I developed an eating disorder, and it was mostly you you eat a lot of food, and it numbs you out. You know, mm-hmm. I never threw up or anything like that. Never but did the uh, anorexic no. thing. But it got out of control where I'd wake up in the middle of the night and night binge. And did you gain weight? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like not a lot, but probably 20. Because your body looked pounds. awesome on American 20, Idol. 20, 25 pounds. What do you think of the new American Idol, or do you have to be diplomatic and Did say you know, it's perfect? Have you watched? I've, I've watched bits and, and pieces of it. I mean, I think they have a great chemistry, and mm-hmm. I think that's what's great. Do you, do you think it's too positive, though? Do you think that well, someone needs to say, do, do you miss a Simon-type character I, there? I, I haven't seen enough of it to know if they're being critical, but what I do like about it, I'll tell you, is, I mean, I love Steven Tyler. I actually... Yeah, well, who doesn't? I was... I told the executive producers to call him for Idol. Yeah. That was partially me. Seems like a lot of people are taking credit for that, though. You know what I mean? A who lot took, of people. Who said it? Uh, somebody, Ask Stephen. Steve, Stephen. Well, Stephen was here. He he told us that it was me, actually. <laughs> oh, did he really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. that makes sense. No, <laughs> but uh, well, I bet you'd love to write a song with Stephen, right? I did. That's how I knew him because he came. What over song did one you day. write with him? It was a song for a movie in Japan called Love Lives. But um, what happened was is that. Last year, I got a phone call from my friend Marty Fredrickson, and he said, what are you doing right now? And it so happened that um, I had a session blowout. He said, uh, you want to write a song? I said, what are we doing? He said, I got Steven Tyler in the car. Oh, wow. He said, are you out of your mind? You want to come over here with Steven Tyler? I said, of course you're going to come over here right now. You come here right now. I was so excited. Threw on a bunch of makeup. Got sure. the Yamaha, you know, <laughs> the old keyboard down. And right. he walks in, and I just thought this guy was the greatest guy ever. He's Is it easy to write with him? Because he's always so full of phrases. easy. And, and, and open and smart and funny But he's and uninhibited, nice. right? Oh, because he God, can, he's the best. He'll just start singing, right? Oh, right. And he started singing. He played Dream On in my living room. I took the pizza he ate and saved it. Wow. I was like, Did you really? Oh, my God. God, he's an icon. I love Stephen. I, did you think it was sort of a come down though for him to like to, to no. put himself out there like that? You think it's okay, right? I think it's great because I think people will get an experience with him that, and they'll also hopefully go back and check his records out. Do you care about J Lo so at all? Great. Do you like her? I mean, I think that you know, obviously she's got a, a hit now. She's relevant. Mm-hmm. She's somebody who sold a lot of records, and you know, look, American Idol. It was a great experience for me in the Why end. don't you watch the show now? Is it too painful? Because American Idol is my life. Every day there's a you kid want it, You want to be done with it. Well, no. It's because every day I'm listening to people sing. Right, I'm listening right, to songs. Right. So do you want to go home and talk about radio? You probably A lot do. of the American... No, no, no. A lot yeah. of American Idols, though, they don't... Uh, they're really not... They don't have the charisma. Isn't part of it not just singing, but it's also your look and sort of what you put, put out there in terms of your energy? I mean, I'm going to make it more about the one thing that it's all about, which is songs. Right. When you leave that show, you better yeah, you, have hot songs because mm-hmm. you're competing with Lady Gaga and Katy Perry. And Kelly Clarkson fucked up her life by going off and, and stopped collaborating with other songwriters, right? That's what screwed her up? No, she did her own one record on her own, but she came back and she's been doing really well since. Mm-hmm. And she's she has truly an um, unbelievable voice. When you worked with her, She's the greatest. So what was she? What was her? Why she? What happened to her? What, because she, I heard she just didn't want to work with anyone anymore. No, I think that she wanted a moment to kind of express mm-hmm. what she was feeling. I mean, this is the thing that is so important about music. It's like these people are expressing mm-hmm. what they're going through. How would you like to go into a room and some? And she says, "Well, this is what I feel today." And some guy says, "No, oh, I don't care about that. Just sing this." Right. And you've you know done all this to come so far, and you're right. not being listened. Have you worked to. with Britney Spears? I have. Yeah. Hmm. She was a sweehheart. You must be worth a fortune. Are you worth a hundred million dollars? Not a hundred. Wow! I mean, you say you You're work a with catch. Britney Spears. What did you do? With her? I um, produced a vocal. Okay. Was she mental? No, not at all. Not with she me. She was like the normal. She's a sweet girl. Yeah. Really, you're sweet. worth a close. You've got to have an amazing catalog. You're I a smart businesswoman. Yeah, She's and I own so a What do you mean you, sold, you, you, you owned your own catalog and you sold it to Bug Music? Yeah. When you sell that many, how many songs were in the catalog? Hundreds. What do they pay for something like that? Some money. Seventy million? No, not fifty much. million. Uh, la 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 la. <laughs> wow. Can we hear more songs? Do you have a prenup <laughs> with your husband? Hello. La la la. Hello. La, la, la. Panty shot time again. If you don't uh, come out with the words. Robin, you're so pretty. Do you have? Oh, stop. Oh, stop uh, it with her. She knows that already. <laughs> do, you had to have signed a prenup with your husband. You're worth. You just got Isn't married two up? years ago. I thought that was an hour. We were. All in. right, no, we're well, keeping you. We like you. Okay. All right, you have the <laughs> Jason. You have the last word, and you're right. The time is up. Jason, go ahead. Hello. Oh, he hung up on me. I <laughs> he had enough. He had, he had enough. Right. Up. He's like, you know what? Screw that bitch. Well, there you go. Uh, listen, you've had an interesting life. I have, and I've that's had a good why life. that's why it's in a book. Cara Di Guardi's book, 
a hell of a high note is in stores now. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. And I hope it inspires people to follow their dreams, go for it, and face their fears, because that's what, what I did. What if their dreams... Uh, you know, there's so many people who go on American Idol, and they think they can sing, but they can't sing. Don't you think there are people out there who are totally off the mark in what their dream should be. I do, but you know what? There's one way to see whether it's a dream or it's it's, it's really, you know, a pipe dream or a dream, uh -huh. and that's the hard work. Because a lot of people want to say they want to do things, yeah. but at the end of the day, you got to work hard for Listen it. Listen to me. Out in the hall when you leave, we have a parting gift of about a case of Robitussin, so you can have <laughs> oh that baby. Oh, my God, that's awesome. I'm going to make sure I'm gonna that happens. I'm going to get to it tonight. I happen to know you're a good person. I know in your book you talk about your mother dying and you took time off and you sat with her. What, for six years you, you were with your mother? She was sick for a long time. You gave wow. her, you cleaned her, you changed her diaper, mm -hmm. you gave her enemas. And let me tell you something, ain't that many people who'll do that. You're she really good, was a great person. You're a, well, she's she all had, right. You know, she she's was human okay. like all of us. But let me tell she you, was human. I swear to God, that's the best thing I ever did in my life. Being with your mother while she was dying? 100%. Father still alive? Yes. Okay. Dating? Married. Married. Wonderful woman, yeah. All right. Now. I uh, like you. Oh, I like you. you. No, I do. I really oh. like you. I, I like I, you. I you know when I knew I really liked you? When I read this Rolling Stone interview. Oh, uh, really? I thought it was very um, heartfelt. You were really honest. And I, I liked that you were dealing with your demons. I like people who face their shit. It's, to me, it's what this life is about. And I'm going to tell you something. You're right to like me. Because I am a wonderful person. Uh, I'm starting to see this. Right. And I turn you on. Believe me, I do. You know, I think you turn everyone on. That's now. right. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm Ronnie's so even turned on. <laughs> I think you are in love with me. Um, I am so in love with That's you. That's right. If you're going to help me sell books, I am like beyond in love with you. <laughs> there you go. Well, we will help you sell books. It's an interesting book. It really is. Thank and you uh, so congratulations. Much. A hell of a high note in stores now. <laughs> You guys hit it off. Oh, God, that was so fun. I mean, you know, that guy, like, gave me my props. I'm forever a fan. I mean, I was a fan already. But, you know, in the past, he I think he, he definitely, what did he call me, a ro eye roller or something. But I, I, you know, I understood it because on Idol, when I looked at myself, I'd go, that girl is so annoying. I want to smack her. So Kara is dead. And Kara, I'm Kara. you're back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm me. So anyway, it was great. I hope I get to come back. And you, I heard you say in there that you know you finally felt like you could say who, display who you truly are in there. He yeah. gave you that forum. He did. He really, really did. Yeah. And for that, I um, I owe him a lot. That was. I really appreciate that. He could have made that really tough for me and concentrated on all the negative, but he gave me a minute to really tell people what I do and to show that I'm actually a kind of fun girl and I'll take everything so seriously. Now you've worked with a lot of talent. You've also obviously been a part of American Idol where you evaluate talent. Evaluate Howard, what, what makes him so special? Well, he's doing a lot of things. He, he knows how to suss somebody out. And he also has an angle and he's somebody who does his homework. He did a lot of homework to know all those things. That's not just fly by, you know, sit there and interviewing and not knowing anything about who you're interviewing. And he knows how to stay in character. Right, there's a lot of humor involved. A lot in of humor. Obviously. He's really funny, and he, and he goes with it, and he's dedicated, and he works hard, like everybody who's successful. He gets an A, A+. Plus. He's going to Hollywood. He didn't get any... Uh, yeah. He's, he's not getting downgraded because of the panty shot, though, right? That, that's okay. You know, I mean, what am I going to do? I, I wear panties. <laughs> you know, what, is that going to be online, that my panty shot? I'm just glad there wasn't any cellulite there. No. But I'm just trying to figure out how you get a panty shot, because there must have been a camera up my dress. No, they're all in the ceiling. They're all from overhead. How the hell did that... All right, I'm not that stupid, so I'm trying to figure out how that worked. But all right, whatever. They got a panty shot. Great. <laughs> what am I going to do? So you'll yeah. be back, it seems. It seems like... Uh... I feel if he wants me back, yeah. I think so. He's awesome. I had a great time. Cool. Thanks for stopping by, Thank Karen. you. He wants Thanks to make you hot chick of the week. Oh, that's... Are you serious? Yeah, come on up. That's awesome. Aww. He has 60,000 followers. 74,000. 74? That. That's so sweet. You know what, though? I thought, I think I'm too young. Old for you, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> young. Old for you. You're married. Yeah, I know. You know what? You're a good guy. And I side with him, by the way, because there are a lot of people that will tell you that they love you, but not show it. And you maybe don't say it, but you show it. And yeah. actions to me speak louder than words. JD thinks that's funny. Oh, what the hell does JD know? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny how she got brought into his relationship. Yeah. I didn't.
She asked me about it, JD. I did. Oh, oh okay. All right. I didn't this know. This is an ongoing yeah. thing from before she All went right. into the studio. All right. Okay. <laughs> I thought this was. I thought it was. I wasn't interacting yeah. with yeah. the guest. It started. I just. I just felt. I just. All right. I just felt you Take were so comfortable talking walk, about it. I have to walk the lady out now. Okay. Discussing it with all of you. Ronnie's walking me out. I have a job. I got your Ronnie Munn painting. I have a job to do. What's all this good stuff here? Take it with you. Oh, I want a snack. I want a red velvet cup. Let me, I'll get your plate. Wait, can I bring one to Larry? Yeah, we're going to get your plate. Oh, yeah. You really got on Ronnie's good side. I like Ronnie. He can be, he can be a tough Papa guy sometimes. Ronnie? Ronnie? Yeah. Sweetheart. It's cupcake. Oh, he's getting his Papa stuff. Ronnie is... It's a go container. Papa! Papa Ronnie! I love Papa Ronnie. It's kind of like pepperoni, but Papa Ronnie. You're totally Papa Ronnie. Thank you. No, that's a great name for you, because it's like, it sounds like pepperoni, but it's Papa Ronnie. Papa Ronnie. Sounds Papa good to Ronnie. me. Oh, I could write a jingle on that. Let me see. Eric, he's been taking a lot of flack for his new mustache. What do you think about that, the handlebar? What's under it? What's under what? You got nice lips, right? Yeah, I think so. He doesn't need a mustache. Well, good with you. Oh, I, oh, man. Come on. Bye. I gotta go, Papa Bye. Ronnie. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> See you later. This is the best of the wrap up show. Wrap -up show. A recap and behind the scenes look with John High, John High. and Gary Delabate. Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap up show begins now. On Monday's wrap up show, Deb called in to defend me between the age difference of me and my girlfriend. Uh, she had an older boyfriend also. It was like a 20, 30 year difference between them. Um, unfortunately, her guy kicked off. And uh, she's unhappy without him, but mine still got me. Then Ken called in from somewhere in, in the fucking future somewhere and uh, tried to break my balls. But you wait and see what I did to him. Check it out. Deborah in Jersey, you're on the wrap-up show. <laughs> Hi, guys. Is this me? Yeah, it's you, Deborah. Hi. I want to defend Ronnie. Okay. Because, you know, everybody makes a big deal about the age difference between him and his girlfriend. And I want you to know, I had a relationship, the love of my life was 34 years older than me. And what people don't understand about that is women love contrast. And sometimes, you know, people, you know, if you're white and you date somebody who's black, that's a sexy contrast. And sometimes it's an age difference contrast. But why, why I want to defend Ronnie is this. I think he does genuinely love his girlfriend, but he's protective of her. And he realizes because of the age difference that even if one day she changes her mind or she wants to go on to a, you know, more permanent relationship with children, he doesn't want her getting emotionally committed because she may grow past this relationship. And I think Ronnie is being very sensitive to her feelings, and he's being way more protective than you guys are giving him credit for. What do you think, Ronnie? Is that well, making sense here? Well, basically, that's what I said, because I, I, I've talked to her about this numerous times about, are you sure you know what you're doing getting yourself into this relationship with me? That, first of all, I told her we're never going to get married, and second of right. all, I told her we're never going to have a kid. Right. So she doesn't care, she claims. See, and I'm very leery of that. But are you protecting Ronnie, her, or hold on, are you protecting her, or are you protecting you? Both. Right, because it's the right. same for you. You're protecting yourself because um, she may say, you know what, I want kids. I got to go. Right. But, but, Ronnie, let me tell you something. She does really, really love you. And if any insecurity you have about that, banish it from your mind because she loves you. She's your lover. She's your confidant. She's your girlfriend. I know it sounds crazy that somebody could, you know, with that much of an age difference. But, you know, the, Scarlett Johansson is dating, what's his name, um, you know, Penn. the actor now. And they Sean Penn. 
Oh, right, right. But they went to the correspondence dinner, and they went separately. She went with her fraternal twin brother because That's they didn't right. want the press talking about them. But the press did talk about them, and they started listing all the May-December romances. And guess who made the list? Howard and Beth. And, you know, Howard can't be a hypocrite about this because he's 18 years older than his wife. Yeah, that's, you know, still, that's still 16 college, years you know, less college. different than Ronnie. Hey, Deborah, as from the woman's 15. point of view... <laughs> from, <laughs> 15 years, Gary. Happy, happy birthday. Deborah, wow, yeah. from the woman's point of view, um, your guy was 34 years younger. Should, should, how should Ronnie help prepare Stephanie for his death? What an well, you know... <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> idiot. I swear to God. Like, Stuff about that. It's not. It, it, it sounds like a morbid topic, but I used. We used to discuss that all the time with Mike, <laughs> and you know, we used to joke about it. And he would complain about his age, and I would say to him, "Well, consider the alternative." You know. Now, the irony of it is, well, I'm, what happened I'm to your guy? Him. What happened to you? She killed him. He was when he was dating me, and would I date a man thirty-four years younger than me? No, I wouldn't. That's just my own insecurity. But love is love, and attraction is attraction. And Ronnie, she's not dating you because of your notoriety or your wealth or whatever you think. Wealth. She generally no, loves no wealth, you believe underneath me. all that facade. No, Deborah, we definitely got that. Just I, the, la the last question is: What did happen to your guy? What happened to your guy? He did pass away. He passed away. And how old? How old was he when he passed away? 72. And how how long were you guys together? Oh, God. <laughs> On and off for about 20 years. Okay, and how old are you now? I'm, I'm, I'm Howard's age. I'm fi I'll be 57 in May. Okay, well, that's what I do. Could Ronnie, you tweet a picture of your ass? <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, yes. I gotta tell you something. He still was the best. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. He was the love of my life. And the thing is, and, you know, until hopefully maybe I'll meet somebody else one day. But I'm saying, it, 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 forget this business. These guys are too young to appreciate that it doesn't matter what package the, your lover comes in. If you love them and you're attracted to them, you could be from Mars and right. somebody could love you. I got so, you. All right. Thank you, thank Deborah. You. Thank you very much, Deborah. <laughs> Ronnie, have you discussed funeral plans with Stephanie? No, all, like I haven't. Saying? No. No, I haven't. <laughs> That's a follow-up question. Who late fifties is, is a good that, time thanks, to look Thanks, asshole, your... Benji. Do you have? Hey, Ronnie. Ronnie, I know you love Steph or like Stephanie, and I know she she loves you. I think it's a great relationship if you guys are happy. I have no. We've nothing. had that. We've but had it's this a real thing. A million times. It's a real thing. That's circles. what age difference is. I mean, really, what well, that's what it's about. It's like. It's like, you know, Listen, who's going to die? She dated guys. We we saw we talked about this a million times in the past three years. Okay. Um. She's dated guys her age. She can't find anything in common with them. All they want to do is meet her at a, uh, at a club or something, take her home and fuck her, and then leave her. And she, does, she doesn't want to be bathrooms in bathrooms. Isn't that nice what you guys do? And... No, but I'm... It's a different club. No. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm just saying... <laughs> what are you talking of, instead about? Of the, instead of the tunnel, it's Gary, Rick's. Gary, Gary. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Oh. It's a one... They're all looking for one night stands. I see what you're saying. I got She's you. She's looking for a relationship where she can be with somebody that she cares about. But you... Uh, no. Ken in Florida, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, age difference is the least of this loser's issues. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what do you, what do you, you mean, know, first Ken? of all, <laughs> well, I, I agree with the previous caller. If age was the only thing, yeah, age, even two, three decades, I don't even think that matters. It's the emotional immaturity that this guy brings to the relationship, <laughs> whatever age. She's more adult than he is. I want to ask one question. How do you know that? Well, go ahead. Ask your question, Ken. Yeah, all the time that the Jew Gene is in the uh, in the studio, all the time that he's putting on his little Ronnie shows that we hear about, who's doing his job? Who's the appointed person? I know a little bit about security, and I know. And what do you know about it? What do you know about it? What do you know about it? Listen, you don't know I, shit about it. You're to, sitting in Florida in your goddamn. To, you're sitting in your goddamn rocking chair in Florida, hey, it, looking it, out the up, window. Up, fuck your, your fat life. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, hey. I'll yeah. You, you retired piece of shit. Get out of here. Go to Boker and sit there at the early bird special. Hey Gary, will you shut him up for a No, I'm not going to shut up. Gary, because you're jealous. I don't jealousy. I don't really have much control over Ronnie. He's, no, wait a second. You shut his mic down. Well, the way. Well, no, Ken, nobody Ken, shut well, my right, mic well, down. Ronnie, okay, hold on a second. Well, Ken, 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 what was your question? Yeah, and give, Ronnie will answer. Okay. Ken, Ken, make a point. Okay. He, he won't talk Ronnie to me, question. though. See? He won't right, talk to me. Let him say it. Let him say it. Hey, He's a on. dick. He can't, hey, he can't fucking address me. Ronnie, let I'm him talk. talk. Address me, moron. Ken, I'm ask Ronnie your question. Ask Ronnie your question. Like a human being, not like an asshole. No, just say, hey, Ronnie, I want to ask you a question. Not fucking immature asshole or whatever you're going to say. Listen to this. You're the immature asshole talking like that. I'm trying to talk. Well, you now talk like a normal person. 
I'm glad everybody's hearing this because you have no capacity to be quiet. It's all about you. Right. Now you, I'm going to answer my microphone. I, I'm going to answer your question. You asked me what do I know about security? A simple basic fact that if you leave your post, you better damn well have somebody backing you up. Otherwise, you compromise security. And I guess the simple question, who do you have backing you up when you're not where you're supposed to be? Okay, first of all, my, my post is outside and inside the studio. So when I'm inside the studio, I am with Howard. So what's going to happen when I'm inside the studio? Your perimeter is unprotected. What perimeter? <laughs> I'm in the I fucking that was, studio, that's you That's what moron. you don't know about security. And we, all, we, security also have, we also have serious security right outside the door. You don't know what, you don't know what So you don't know what you're means. talking about. You don't know what perimeter means, we, asshole? Yeah, we have serious security outside the door, okay, asshole? Listen, you fool. The no, way, you, you know, fool. I, I don't understand. A guy who sits on a phone calling the radio show all the time is a fool. Oh, wait a second. You, wait a second. You want to start knocking your fans, the subscribers who pay your salary? You oh, don't think you want please. To, you I don't think you want to start. Oh, wait a second. Another sign of immaturity. Yes. I don't yes. think you guys want to start insulting your listeners. You called up insulted me, you fucking asshole. No, 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 you called up and insulted me first, didn't you? You, co you couldn't call no, up and say, hey, I, never... I got a question for Ronnie. No, I got a, call, a question for the immature idiot or whatever. Fuck you, dude. Who are no, you? But, but, You're but shit. It's just a given. It's just a given. Shut but your you know, fucking way... radio off. I don't care. The way you deport yourself in public, Ronnie. Yes. The way you talk about yes. I'm, you know. Hey, I'm talking to a guy here who likes fingers up his ass, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you're, you're not into sex. You like fucking taking it up the ass from nah, other guys. I... I'm not the one that said it. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad everybody got to hear it. You're short. You, you, you got no... Uh, 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 what do you got? What do you have? My work involves... Uh, Let's say work that got me is the runner-up in the uh, Gary audiobook contest. Oh wow! Or whatever it's called. How I'm cool! Just saying, I'm, I'm not. I, I believe me. I didn't live to do it. Runner-up, you didn't even fucking it. win. I, let's just You're say great. I You're awesome, people. man. I, hey, I work with Pro Tools a lot. So, do you think that makes you better than Ronnie? Of course. No, not one bit. Well, I'm not the one that says better or worse. I, I just said that this guy is so emotionally immature. Listen, dude, that, listen that back to the tape. He doesn't even know how to handle a relationship. And the way he behaved on on the show today, when when Stern just let him ramble on and basically take control of the microphone, uh, Gary, no disrespect to you and a little uh, disrespect to Howard, but you guys can't moderate properly if you let this guy steamroll over people. Actually, when I, he was actually, I got to tell you, when he was steamrolling over you, it was sort of funny. That's why we let it happen. How many, hey, hey, just, hey, just not funny to you. Hey, like hey, you, how many <laughs> followers do you have on Twitter? <laughs> I, 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 hey, you know how many I have? I'll tell you. I'll how many? You. <laughs> what, 13? None, none, because I could give a shit. And no, I, don't think, I don't think anybody really cares what I have to say. That's how important I feel about myself. Well, obviously, that's why you have to call the wrap-up show to get your big <laughs> mouth out somewhere, don't you? All right, I'm bringing this to an end. Ken, thank you for calling in. On Tuesday's wrap-up show, we're lucky to have two big guests, uh, director Scott DePace and Robin Quivers from our show, and they got into a discussion about Obama, about Donald Trump, about torturing prisoners, and uh, it got a little bit heated. It was interesting to watch. Here's what happened. There's been a lot of talk about bin Laden and what went down, and I asked Scott to come down to pace because it seemed like everyone is sort of okay with now some of the methods that were used in order to get to the end. You know, the means justifies the end, or vice versa. Do you feel vindicated at all now that people are like, you know what, maybe it was a good idea that we had those guys down in Guantanamo? I guess so, a little bit. Why, Gary, how are you feeling these days? Uh, I'm just glad it happened. I, I'm not are really... you okay with waterboarding a Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? But I think they've been um, very quick to point out that none of these revelations were made during That's the conflict. enhanced interrogation. That's not what uh, the guy from Long Island, the senator, Peter saying. King. Yeah, Peter I don't King. like him at all. Yeah, because he's Republican. No, of because he's sort of he's just sort of a loose cannon that just says a lot of wacky shit. Not wow. because he's a Republican. Wow. Well, what do you mean, liberal, wow. I, I, where's the loose shit? Where's the loose cannon? You're sorry, I don't understand. I've he never just heard spouts that. a lot of crap because he had a a. Uh, committee hearing on whether uh, Muslims or, I don't know, whatever he said, Muslims in America or something? Is that the just, one? Just in general, I always hear him, you know, he's always on the contrary to anything that, de that the Democrats say, so yeah, I probably yeah. don't like him because he's Republican. <laughs> exactly. He's ugly, too. He's like a big face. <laughs> but, hey, he has a funny looking so guy. There, there's like, a, there's two things that I think people are mixing up into one thing with the enhanced interrogation is 
there's the moral argument. Is it morally wrong for us to be doing it? And is it effective? So, Robin, I, I want to ask you first, like, do you think it's – is it morally wrong for us to be doing it, whatever the results? Uh, yes, I think it's morally wrong, and I don't think it's effective. And I think that's one of the things that are uh, – you know, is coming out of all of this stuff is that nothing was done. This guy didn't talk until after all you that was know. over. None of us know. If that's what I'm reading in reports. Well, what I'm reading is the opposite of that. But, so. but uh, let me, uh, this is what I don't understand, and this is like the argument – you know, I watched – I was on the treadmill yesterday. I watched CNN and Fox News. I was going back and forth between the both of them. It was like two entirely different stories. So how does it come out – that Robin's reading something one place and you're reading something in another place. How is, what is that? What does that right. mean? Right, exactly. It's fucked up. So what I believe is, what you want to I don't what give you, a what shit. What you want to yeah. believe is. I don't give a shit whether we chop their fucking toes off. These guys, they're not in a military. The Geneva Convention does not apply to them. So therefore, well, it doesn't matter I whether the something... Geneva Convention applies. Well, that's what we're... There is a right and a wrong. And you have to decide Listen, what kind of people you want to be. You're basically scaring them is all you're doing. You're not putting their health in any danger. So scare them all you fucking want, as far as I'm concerned, to find out the well, information you need. Well, why don't we start putting you know, bamboo shoots under their fingernails? Well, that you conceivably could say you're physically hurting them at that point. Right? Yeah, I heard the argument that we're not doing that. This is this is actually I heard this on Nick DiPaolo's comedy record. He said we're not putting bamboo shoots. And that's exactly what he said. He goes, he was trying to explain on his comedy record, but he was being serious that uh, that you know how like when you see wrestling and how the floor has got springs in it, that the walls are like that. And when they bang a guy's head against the wall, they're not really hurting him. So and when they waterboard him, all our guys get waterboarded, and that we're not torturing them, we're scaring them. So Gary and Rob, if you let's say. By the way, I haven't, I haven't come out and said I'm against okay, torture. Well, well, if you found out, Robin, it, it was effective to prevent innocent You death. still have to determine what kind of person you want to be. One that wants to keep our Americans safe. Under any circumstances. Yes. Yep. That's the kind of person you want to be. Are you okay? You are you okay with them putting a bullet in bin Laden's head? Or do you think they should have taken Absolutely. him alive? Absolutely. He declared war on us. So as far as he's concerned... I'm a, a soldier. He said every, th there were no innocent people in those towers on 9-11. He said uh, any American is a soldier. So I feel the same way about him. We didn't kill him. He died in battle. You don't think those dark-skinned people just kind of imply it by the way they look? Uh, that's very funny, Benji. Thanks. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm glad they killed him because if they, capturing him would have been the worst thing in the world. Absolutely. It, it would, it would have, been, have been a circus. It would have been riots in the city and he would have been a martyr. He's fucking dead. He's out he to sea. He would have been a reason to do all Worked kinds of great. other things. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I think they buried like a pinky at sea. I think they have the whole body. They do a medical <laughs> test. They didn't fucking throw anything so in the should, sea. So should assassination be okay for U.S. policy? That all depends on who we're talking about. Well, we've it's signed treaties against that. Case well, if you so basis. if you if you picked him off, is that an assassination? If somebody just you know, I think well, that would qualify as assassination. Then I, yeah, then I think, but by yeah. the same token, it's again, not a leader, he was an enemy of the country, and he had declared war on all of us. So, Scott, however you take him out, you take him out. Scott, what do you think about this whole thing with Trump running for president and? and I think so far he's done nothing wrong, and you guys are all wackos because all he wanted to do was come out, finally put a, Obama could have put this arrested from day one. There was a lot of people who did not think that he was an American citizen. And why was that? That was because, um, you know, you, you have to admit his one dad was from, uh, I don't know, Africa. His somewhere. one dad? How many dads do we get? His, his dad was from Africa somewhere. His mom had just moved to Hawaii. Her name's Stanley. I know, a guy, I know a guy who ran for president against him that was born in Panama. It, that was totally dead. There was, Why? There was, was documentation I don't know what that. goes on in Panama. That's Gary, not the United States. we have States. something called the Constitution, right? Yeah. So if in and in it there was a he uh, showed an the fucking made. birth certificate he showed it he showed a, whatever the hell he showed was apparently not good enough for most and people so why not Hawaii just end he said it was fine why not just end the debate and show it why did he have to wait two years and make a big issue they of it they couldn't find it did you read anything oh, about yeah, that oh yeah bull crap they suddenly found it a week after Trump made the accusation oh it was Trump he Wait. got afraid he was afraid of Donald Trump oh my god and if he you decided to produce this information was that. are you out of your mind the guy, the guy, a poll came out the day earlier that said 30 percent of americans believe that he is uh 100 an american citizen there was a, a lot of people weren't starting to take trump's position i, I, get, I don't him. buy that poll 
That's a poll well, that you saw in a place CNN. that works for you. No, it was like a CNN poll. It was like a I CNN poll God, or it was a CNN Gary, poll? I swear to God in my life, it was a poll I, on you, so your you're side. Say, you're saying that 70% <laughs> of the country didn't believe he was American. 70% of the Why country would, was willing to believe that it was possible that he was not an American. I don't Why believe that poll. Why would he hold back this information? Exactly. I th- well, exactly. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> because he felt it made the Republicans look stupid. And maybe it did in, in some ways. But once Trump got on board and a lot of people started to believe it because things aren't going so well in the country right now, then he said, well, I'm going to put an end to this fiasco. Did you, see the, did you see the article I sent out yesterday about how Trump lied about his, uh, his Vietnam deferment? Yeah, yeah, I read that. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's as goofy, you know, I mean... Would you support... Look, I'm would not you... a big Trump fan. I think some of the things he's saying so far are, are, are great and I'm, and I'm on with them, but I, I, I don't think... Uh, Anyone who has a TV show and he, where he's talking about firing people, and that's a, I, I, I think they'll be a little odd to vote for that guy. You mean like when an actor became the president of the country, that sort of thing? No, it's not that <laughs> dipshit. But it was, it was just everything that goes along with him and his fake gold crap everywhere. And I just, I, I don't know. I think it would be a little odd. Does it surprise you that Howard's so happy about the bin Laden thing and the way he's been talking about what no, went down? No, he's, he's always been on the right you, side of this argument. How could you not be happy? He's like, yeah, absolutely. He's Even on the wrong I'm side on the, of the right side of his argument. He's on the wrong side of the rest of the argument. <laughs> what, what, do you what is the rest of the argument? You know, everything that it's happening. You know, the Bush stuff and everything recently where he's still supporting this president, even though he's... He's horrible, you know. But that's an opinion, not a fact. Of course. Well, yeah, that's what we're talking about here, opinions. Okay. That's what this show is about. That's what you call Scott for, not facts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as opposed to yours. You're not willing to... What What did she say this morning when... Uh, what? When, what was it when Howard uh, said... Oh, oh, about the... Uh, what the, the nickname for Osama was? Oh, uh, Geronimo? Well, Geronimo. I was listening to probably Fox News, and they were saying ah. that And you couldn't Geronimo. admit you were wrong. You had to I, blame the reporter. I, I couldn't admit. I didn't go and do this investigation. I was listening to a reporter. <laughs> but, th- but this is what I was curious about, Scott, and I think this is why Jar called you down, because I'm curious to know the answer. When all said and done in this particular incident, would you say that uh, Obama did a very good job? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, there was. He basically continued the Bush policy, doing a very good job. See, he's got to always be in a dead. It's always a. The man what had to make a call in this particular instance. Did I guarantee he do you, the if, right thing. Here's what I will also say: If Obama was president for say four years before, we we might not have had the information to get Osama. Again. As far as I can tell, in other words, he's he against the. He talked about all of these names. He and Holder long have been against after the all enhanced the interrogation. interrogation. All right. But you can't go down that road because if you well, want to. I could do anything I want. No, but if you blame like what's Start happening now or what happened or take credit what happened four years ago, eight years ago, there are good things happening and bad things that happened. You can't just have your cake and eat it too there. I, but there's a track record here where they're trying to shut down Guantanamo every minute, they're trying to stop the, the waterboarding. I, I say, fuck these people. I'm not, you know. We we got to stop babying this this situation and let's fucking get serious. You'd think he was on one of those helicopters. <laughs> on Wednesday's wrap up show, there was a lot of talk about Jesse James and the controversial picture he took with the SS hat, and Jason felt very strongly about what his intentions were, and that overlapped into Benji suggesting that there's nothing wrong with someone wearing that hat and going to a gay dance club. So Fred was here to chime in. Gary said his piece. I said mine. And there was a lot of talk about the Nazis. Only on the wrap-up show. Welcome back to the wrap-up show. Before we move on to Doug Stanhope and Bingo, let's talk about how Jesse explained that picture, which became so controversial with controversial, excuse me, with the SS hat. He said he is one of the most non-racist people you'll ever meet. He said that today. Which is usually what somebody <laughs> says when they're in a situation. I I don't know whether he is or isn't. He said he wasn't. It's all, but, but, it's but all perspective. When you get into that situation, you're like, I have tons of Jewish friends. I have tons of black friends. Mm. Jason, what do you think? <laughs> well, I have to say that. To, so to me, when Jesse was coming on today, that's what bothered me way more than the Sandra Bullock thing. And I did like the fact that he said he regretted it and he apologized. I thought, you know, what else can you do at this point? But I don't buy his explanation. I'm sorry. I just don't buy it. I don't think uh, I, I think there's more than that one picture out there. There's that other picture of him in the car with his friends dressed up like a Nazi and they're giving the Sikh hails. There's another one that supposedly he's in. I, I don't know if there's a controversy of it's him where he drew a picture of like Hitler doing something, I don't know, and holding it and smiling. And uh, I, I just don't buy it. I think maybe it was a long time ago and maybe he's a changed person now. But I, I think when you put on a Nazi uniform and start taking pictures with it, uh, there's not a lot of humor in that for me. Did personally. he talk about um, the discussion he had about that on Piers Morgan? Did he discuss that? 
because the Piers Morgan gave him a really hard time about it, and he was like, "Screw you, your prince is a Nazi." He goes, "I only wore the hat. He had the armband and everything on." I, I think it's. I, I Jason, I, I just think that's. Yes, may- maybe he is racist. I don't have any evidence that he is. And and to say like well, putting on, although if I went Nazi- to your- you can make the same argument. Uh, Kid Rock's going through that thing right now, I've, and about I do. The, about I think the Confederate flag, too. where people are going like, I see nothing wrong with the Confederate flag, and yet what it represents. I think I, it's, I, it's 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 a tricky, tricky thing. Sometimes I, people- it's not that tricky. Here's the deal: if I went to Benji's house mm-hmm. and he handed me a Confederate flag and a noose and said, "Hey, you want to pose for a funny picture?" I say no. Because uh, that's offensive and it's wrong. But I've and, done that with Benji, and it's but, okay. But do you think? Do you, th- you don't. Okay, you don't think some people just put on a Nazi outfit? F- ha ha! It's funny. I wouldn't. I got to tell you right I now. Wouldn't. If, if somebody put a Nazi wouldn't. hat on me, I pull it right off. Because I've I, done it, so I, I can't. No, I can't. No, no, Fred has it. And you know what? I'm the one who bought, I'm the one who rented it for Fred to do it. So I mean, we're both guilty. We had to actually go out to Queens and pirate outfits. What's that? Is it okay for your kids to wear pirate outfits? Yes. Sure. Is is a pirate a good person? Some are they depends. going out raping and killing? The way people? they're depicted in movies now with Johnny Depp, yeah, they're good. People. I'm not going to go down this road with Benji. I, I think you're, you're you're splitting hairs and parts and stuff. I know if I was at my friend's house and at, as a joke he pulled out a Nazi armband and said, "Isn't this funny?" I'd leave like that. But it, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's, a it's a symbol of hatred. But what's funny? Wait, 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 hold on. What could be funny about it? Like if I pulled it out and we were together, I go, "Benji, you put this on. Isn't it funny?" Let, what's funny about okay, it? Okay, here's a, let's let's say that we all dressed up as Nazis and went to a gay dance club and went dancing. You don't. Think why that'd be would funny? we do that? It'd just be. It, that's it's ridiculous. It would be. And why, do you, why are you bringing the gays it. into it? If you're do, listen, if you're doing well, some most sort, Nazis if you're doing some sort of performance, like, okay, so Prince Harry, okay, right, who dressed up like the Nazi, uh, I think that's what. And Pierre what was Moore his was reasoning? To. Now he was at a Halloween party. Now I still think he displayed amazingly poor. I agree. It was judgment. stupid of him. But at least there was an okay. It was a Halloween party. You're supposed to get into a costume, even though he picked the worst costume possible. When you're hanging out in a friend's house, just throwing Nazi shit on and throwing up the side hill and then and then and the mustache. See how? Mm-hmm. And then, by the way, there were lots of questions about that bombshell McGee with her with WP and whether or not she was a white supremacist. I'm just saying it's a lot of smoke there. I respect the fact that he came on and apologized and said he regretted it. And I would put them, for me personally, I consider it a done issue, but I just don't buy He said he, he apologized about putting on the Nazi outfit? Yes. yes, he said he, said he, he apologized re- and he regretted. He went to rehab for Nazi addiction, by the way. <laughs> now, Fred, did you ever sh- did you ever struggle with that? Because you did guess with who's the Nazi the Jew- addiction. No, well, you did. I'm being serious. You yeah, did guess who's the Jew? And- you know what? I, you know, because it started off as just like one of those weird bits, and then it turned and blew up into something way, way bigger. Yeah, there were times when it was kind of weird to put on the uniform, and the weirdest thing for me was when we were doing butt bongo fiesta, and I'm standing backstage. And I'm trying to hide from Daniel Carver because I didn't want him to see me in my outfit and we wanted it to be a surprise. But he spotted me out of the corner of his KKK eye. A gleam and a glint came into his eye. He came over and he shook my hand and I was going like... This is when it feels really shitty because mm. you know. Well, yeah. he feels there, there, like he's he got thought a you kin- were one of them. He felt like there was a kinship there, and I, that made me really. The uncomfortable. weird thing for us was that Fred did not look entirely unnatural in the outfit. Yeah. <laughs> that would, we, we, like, we, we're, we're like, holy shit, Fred looks like a fucking but Nazi. You see, that's why I've got a spare, so if there's a, a, a fourth Reich to come along, it's like, you know, <laughs> if anybody deal. wants to be a friend of mine, I'll put in a good We're doing a, 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 a scripted, and by scripted, I mean, you know, we plan to do this bit. If Fred showed up at the Christmas party dressed like, uh, uh, you know, that guy you dress up as, I have a problem. Well, that, that was a problem. <laughs> but I wouldn't skate even if it was a former character. No, I'm dressing as a character that I portrayed. We had, no. we had to rent the outfit twice, right? right. Once, for, once for a live show, once for a Buff Bongo Fiesta. The first time I rented it for the live show, no problems whatsoever. Went back to the same place to get it, and there had been an incident where somebody had rented it saying that it was for a stage show, but had in fact taken it around. And, and they were terrorizing and, and, like temples out on Long Island. So we ha- I had to bring a letter on our letterhead taking full responsibility for anything that happened to the outfit while it was in my possession. And, and another thing to go back to Jesse's point where he's saying, oh, I was at the Schindler's List House guy and this is what he has. If if Fred had his Nazi outfit at his house, and again, I'm over there, and he goes, hey, Jason, I want to put this on for fun and take So pictures? I guess I, that Hitler no. watercolor I bought you for your birthday, i got to send that Please back. And, and, and this is a Donate true, the money to the Holocaust. Th- this is a true fact. This is a true fact. <laughs> Fred's outfit was from The Sound of Music, and that's a <laughs> true was, fact. It was great. Oh, that's awesome. What a, that was the cool fact. part yeah. about it. You look inside and go, Sound of Music, you don't 1964. You see the fun of just like, oh, it's fun to dress up. Yeah, but not in a Nazi outfit. No, for me, really, not, that's a, I really don't see the fun. I don't. The area outfit, and I wouldn't dress I up as a slave master. And, and, and to I, do it in certain act, to like to do it in a way that's like to provoke someone in a mean way, like to do it in a. Uh, well, you could Jewish even go back to, to the point of the producers, people, you know, with Mel Brooks. Wrong, I mean, but, for him, springtime for Hitler. What's the fun way of wearing a Nazi outfit? Where, where, tell me the fun way. Like I said, to, at a kid's to, party, to do it in an absurd way, just to dress up, to do it like in a what for the shock value. 
for fun. Yeah, I could see it being I don't fun. see the fun. No. Like well, we were fun doing like I said going to a gay dance club. Or like going somewhere like, like why are you like, terrorizing going the gays ice skating, with Hitler? Going ice skating at Rockefeller Center, dressed up as well, a Nazi. Talking about doing a could be I'm funny. Seeing, I'm seeing Benji's next bit. But Benji, Benji, <laughs> if you're doing a TV writing. show, I, I then I can weigh that. To do it for your own humor is wrong. Well, I it's I just, just wrong. It's just fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys are like, oh, I, I, it's just no, like, I, I know, but I, I, you, I, I know you have wacky ideas and you like to be a contrarian, but I can't no, it's figure out where you're contrari- going with I, this. Listen, if, if, if someone was trying to do it to upset someone because, but you don't think, Jewish okay, all right, so you're going to be funny. You're going to go to a gay dance club and just assuming that gays will think it's funny. But what about people that you don't think anybody's going to be fucking well, wildly all, offended? I don't, I don't think, uh, he, I don't think what's his name, uh, Jesse James. I don't think he said he was just he just did it at a. Right, I'm house. talking about you now. You're at a gay dance club because you're going to be crazy. I don't go to gay dance clubs anyway. But I'm just anyway, saying you're I'm in your Nazi outfit at a gay dance club. Like, where's the joke? And how do you don't was, think? Listen, how do you? That don't was think my first. That was my first thing. I think the the r- ice skating rink would be funny. <laughs> but don't you think people <laughs> at the ice skating rink will be offended? And also, ice. Yeah. Yes. Did you, did you you're yeah, a comedian. You're describing a performance piece. And 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 is this is some piece that you're writing and you want to perform for some artistic Don't, value? by the way. If, if yeah, I wouldn't, but <laughs> but <laughs> that's still different than what Jesse did, which is fucking around wearing Nazi shit. And he Have you it. ever played dress up at all? I know yes. there's no goofy pictures of you guys that exist anywhere. Not a Nazi outfit. Not a, no, not a Nazi outfit, not any racist He's shit. Not no. a, he just had what about a, if, a, if it's you a dressed up picture. as a terrorist? Uh-oh, it sounds like Steve's okay? got something going on. I don't know, I never did it. You used to go to gay dance clubs? Yes. Really? <laughs> I won some uh, contests at a day dance club once. Who can shut the, the biggest cock? <laughs> no, the prettiest, the prettiest cock contest. When I was, I won like a couple hundred bucks. Did I Nazi- think, I, I think, I think Benji is not lying. Yeah, I told you about that. Before. The Nazi symbols stand for nothing but hate and destruction, and there's no other way to look at it. That, that's all I have to say about it. 